morning, uh, dear participants. And uh, welcome to uh, day three of uh, this uh, three day uh, Bhuvan overview webinar. Uh, uh, this is uh, Harish here uh, from uh, NRSC Balanagar, uh, welcoming you all for this uh, day three session. Uh, it is a pleasure to have you all of us uh, in this uh, webinar. As uh, you have been learning, as you are aware, uh, uh, Bhuvan is uh, ISRO's uh, geospatial platform uh, for data visualization, uh, for data download. It is also a platform where uh, you can visualize and download a lot of thematic data, a lot of application data. A uh, lot of uh, support that we are extending to various ministries uh, for uh, various uh, up, uh, governance applications. Uh, you can consume a lot of uh, services and data products from this geo portal. And you can also collaborate on uh, some of the geospatial applications. So all these uh, uh, topics uh, you're exposed to and uh, you're getting to know, you're trying to understand. Uh, so today also we'll uh, try to showcase some of the applications and case studies uh, that were uh, carried out uh, using the Bowen platform. So I hope uh, you're all uh, uh, doing well and good, safe and healthy. So we'll start. Uh, so what we have in store for day three is uh, we'll have a look at uh, how Bowen platform is helping for uh, agriculture and forestry applications. Then we'll also have uh, the disaster management support and uh, what uh, what services. Uh, are offered through the Bhuvan platform. And then again, we'll uh, try to have a small demonstration on the Bhuvan so that you will also uh, can understand how exactly to use the services and the various uh, applications. Uh, so without uh, delaying further, uh, let us start the first session. And, and if you're uh, in the, uh, if you are there with your laptop or a desktop, or if you have access to the internet connection, probably you can uh, open this, uh, open the Bhuvan Geo portal also and try to uh, uh, replicate whatever the uh, demonstration that are carried out by our uh, speakers. So with that note, uh, let us have the first talk on uh, Bhuvan applications and uh, case studies. So to give this talk, we have uh, with us uh, Dr. Abhishek Chakrabarti. Uh, he is uh, uh, in the Agriculture Sciences and Applications Group. Uh, Abhishek, sir, uh, good morning and uh, welcome to this uh, uh, first session of the Bhuvan uh, three day webinar. Yeah, good morning, Harish. Uh, sir, uh, if you are ready, it is over to you for your presentation and the demo. And just to again yes, inform yes. the participant, like uh, kindly yeah. post, it, post your uh, queries uh, in the live chat of the YouTube channel. Uh, we'll take the appropriate questions. Uh, to the speaker and any general question also will be discussed uh, uh, during this session. So thank you very much and uh, have a good day. Okay, first let, let me share my slide and let me know whether it is visible or not. Please give me the feedback, Harish. Is it visible, Harish? Yeah, visible, sir. It is visible, sir. Kindly, okay. uh, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So today we'll, we'll be mainly discussing on the agricultural applications and how Google uh, platform Abhishek, has been sir, used. Uh, I think, and, uh, Abhishek, okay. sir, sorry to interrupt. I think, yes. Uh, you can slightly uh, increase the volume of your uh, microphones. Now it is okay? Is it okay now? Hello. Yeah, better, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, please go ahead, sir. Yeah. So coming uh, half an hour to 40 minutes, we'll be discussing on the application of uh, Bhuvan in, in our different uh, projects on agriculture. And mainly I am from agriculture background, so majority of the application will be from the agricultural sciences only. So I'm Dr. Ravishek Chakravarti, head agroecosystem and modeling uh, group. And uh, I'll be presenting to you the. Uh, I'll be taking through the timeline where we have developed different agricultural applications through remote sensing and GIS technology, and how Kuban platform uh, 
has become a very efficient tool i'll demonstrate one case uh, one application of it online in the google uh, so that you can uh, appreciate what is the capability of this kind of a geospatial platform for outreaching and catering to the services to the different uh, users so without delaying first uh, let me first introduce the subject that uh, hopefully you have been uh, by this time you have been knowing all this terminology remote sensing gis satellite data and all these things so basically what we are doing we are using this technology our target is uh, uh, to use this particular technology to the grassroots level people of india for our uh, uh, real problem solving uh, and this is the dream of our father of uh, indian space program vikram sarabhai also and this is our basically uh, the ultimate goal to use this advanced technology not for any fancy thing but for the real problem solving uh, of the common man and the society so we have a plethora of observational satellite we call it for uh, uh, theme based also for land and water for ocean for climates and then we have this high resolution we have a moderate resolution the satellite and depending on the uh, characteristics of the satellite basically the application uh, is uh, uh, steering through this so if we have a national level applications we go for a, a satellite where we can cover the whole nation in every daily uh, if not sub daily then we have the regional application then we have a very specific application for cadastral mapping or urban applications which requires very high resolution but in as far as the agriculture is concerned our resolution basically uh, requirement is moderate say for example 10 meter to 50 meter we are very uh, very comfortable with 10 meter to 15 meter of special resolution but our repetitivity needs to be at least 5 days minimum uh, more uh, the repetitivity more would be uh, 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 more would be um, we, we are happy for uh, getting such repetitivity but on an average 5 days repetitivity with uh, 10 meter to 15 uh, 50 meter resolution most of the agricultural applications uh, can be done Uh, but some specific applications of course requires further uh, higher resolutions so uh, when we are talking of all this technology basically we call it as a geospatial technology which not only uh, in in encompasses remote sensing it encompasses gis it, it encompasses ict it encompasses pda devices it, uh, automatic weather station net towers gps or the navigational uh, services your Uh, radar uh, observations, altimetry, so on and so forth. So, in um, it's a gamut of technology basically. Uh, and what we are, what we have been doing is that we are based based on our objective. We have been using this kind of technology for uh, our uh, to catering to our need in you know, actionable, affordable product and services to the users. now let me uh, go through the different major programs which have been have become a very successful story as far as uh, india is concerned one of the major program was uh, that has been going on actually is the national agricultural drought assessment and monitoring system you know we we are positioned in a tropical uh, to subtropical uh, region of the world and uh, we are highly dependent on monsoon if monsoon fails then whole of our food basket is, is basically get, is getting affected so drought is a very perpetual phenomena in indian uh, subcontinent and it requires objective assessment and uh, 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 real time uh, solutions for rehabilitations or uh, any kind of interventions so as far as the drought is concerned we basically there are many kinds of droughts meteorological drought because of the shortage of rainfall hydrological drought because of the shortage of the surface water but what we have been uh, targeting is the agricultural drought this is principally occurred due to the reduction in the soil moisture and the crop get affected and it withered ultimately dried up and we get uh, this uh, highly reduced Yield or maybe the no production to the um, farming system. So whatever may be the case, basically we uh, there are short term management uh, things. There are long term management. There are two methodology for get, uh, uh, 
uh, drought management. For short term, what we require is the monitoring of the drought. In a first country like India, we need to monitor the crop status almost over a fortnight basis. At least uh, district level, and now the requirement has come as a sub-district or block level also. So we also require some prediction or early warning where we have some lacuna and we have been working on it. We require agro-advisories and of course the crop damage assessment. For a long-term management, what we require is a vulnerability map. A particular area is vulnerable to drought or not. Say for example, a very um, dry area of southern India like Anandapur or the western deserts like Jaisalmer regions, they are highly vulnerable to the drought. But this vulnerability reduces with the irrigation potential. Say, for example, Punjab is not that much vulnerable to the drought. So, like this, what is the risk potential of a particular area? And based on that, we will prioritize our every effort. So, this is basically if we generate a vulnerability map, it, it stays for five to ten years, and we can this becomes a long term becomes the base data for long term planning. So both these things, uh, we can have some intervention of this kind of a technology. The role of NRSC was to operational service of drought monitoring, analysis of integration of different indices, support to agricultural ministry or state department or disaster management, and so on and so forth. So what happened, it started in 1988 with uh, the conceptualization of the, and the methodology. From then, we every year we progressed, we started initially with NOAA AVH error data, and then we inculcate our sweeps data, IRS sweeps data from 1998 onwards. Then 2002, we have the AVH data 2004 onwards, and we inculcated MODIS also. Then so on and so forth. Ultimately, in uh, it matured, and 2012, actually, it is institutionalized. What I mean to say, Government of India, Ministry of Agriculture, has created a new, new institute called Mahalanabis National crop forecasting center. It is created to uh, actually inculcate all these programs, not only these, many other programs which are mature enough to run it operationally. So the total methodology has been transferred to MNCFC and from then 2012 onwards they have been doing it operationally with more enhanced use. And we are in the back end, we are also giving the technology support or new, new indices or new, new methodology which can be inculcated in this particular program. So this is uh, NADAMS. What, in a nutshell, if we can say, uh, there are many complexity, but what we generally do, say for, for example, in a particular year, which is a normal year, we see the progression of the crop vegetation indices, what is called NDPI, and if it is following this particular curve for a normal year, and and for the current year, if it is deviating for some for any of the reason, so we we. Be basically flag it based on this indication and corroborating with different other parameters like rainfall, like shown area progression, like uh, uh, the wetness of the um, crop and uh, many uh, and of course ground truth. So based on that we declare uh, that this particular area is having the drought or not. So uh, yeah, the thing is that if it is in a very small area, you can do it manually. But whenever it is a very uh, large area like India, you will require some kind of a uh, process. Uh, they, that is very important for uh, this kind of uh, applications. So from, from uh, June, July, August, basically we call it uh, uh, as a normal um, uh, watch and alert. Uh, from September onwards, we started declaring it as a uh, normal mild drought, moderate drought, and severe drought. And importantly, this is a, drought is a, is a state subject, so state uh, used to declare the drought. And these kind of reports help them to objectively assess whether uh, really central government, of course, uh, gives some kind of a rehab, uh, fund uh, diversion of the drought affected area. These particular reports basically help them to objectively assess whether really the drought has happened or not, and how much and wh uh, where. So that is a very important near near real time information which basically government is getting through this particular program. So the ultimately each and every districts and now it has in the sub district level we basically flag it whether the drought has happened or not. So this kind of a graph we will generate 
if it is drought, we'll give some kind of a color uh, palette, and then uh, the whole districts are covered. Right now, there is a demand to cover the northeast area because drought has started occurring in the northeast area also. And another important part of things what I have been telling you is the agricultural drought vulnerability for the long term. So it it is basically three things which is uh, determining. One is the exposure sensitivity and the adaptive capacity of the particular area. Uh, we use basically long term uh, rainfall area, uh, showing period uh, uh, rainfall, total season rainy days, total period rainy days. Uh, this comes under the exposure part. For the sensitivity, we see that we basically use seasonal integrated NDVI, maximum NDVI, August NDVI cropping pattern and adaptive capacity means the irrigation support, land use and soil and so this can further be improved but this is the kind of a things what still we have done and we generate a particular index called edvi that is ethical child down vulnerability index and based on that all over India, already we have done it, the agricultural drought vulnerability. It gives a particular area whether this is vulnerable for the drought or not, and based on that, we can have a long-term planning. Uh, so uh, the intervention of this technology is so, uh, so, so deep is that um, in the drought manual, which has uh, been basically written, uh, means uh, come up in, in December 2016, NDVI or the satellite based indices played a very important role in the first time in the history of India. Yeah, satellite based indices are basically a part of drought declaration manuals. So that is the kind of a penetration of this technology. Next uh, program is the forecasting of agricultural output using space and agrometrology and land based observations. This has basically developed in uh, other um, centers like space application centers, and also NRC has a part of it also. I'll not go into the detail of it, but in a nutshell, it, it, it is uh, the uh, NADAMS is because of uh, for the drought. This is for the production, agricultural production system. That means it requires crop area and it requires crop yield. So this actually gives you the total production. And this is a pre-harvest yield. Importantly, this is a pre-harvest yield. Say, for example, wheat is being harvested in the month of April. This uh, prediction will come in the month of late February. So almost one and a half month before, basically, we are getting a predicted yield of a particular crop uh, so that we can uh, have our every uh, machinery is triggered uh, for uh, any kind of procurement, any kind of uh, export and import and so on and so forth. So what it is required is the econometry, agrometrology for all the um, weather parameters. It requires land based observations or satellite observations uh, for crop area delineations, crop conditions. Because there is a this, this is a basically a down regulating factor of the crop yield, then in acreage and of course the yield. So based on all these remote sensing, along with land observations, along with econometry and agrometrological observations, it, uh, the crop is basically uh, started uh, being uh, monitored from pre seasons to the early seasons to the mid seasons, and ultimately pre harvest uh, yield we are releasing uh, uh, for. Uh, uh, for the major crops over India. So this is uh, uh, also uh, right now, I think uh, these are the crops. Some of the crops are basically you know, much other crops are also included, but majorly paddy, two season, wheat, potato, cotton, jute, rabi, jawar, mustard. And uh, these are the major crops which uh, are now in operation. Another important uh, 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 program is basically the green revolution. What we have been telling uh, 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 one of the success stories of our agriculture. Uh, this has basically happened in the north and north, uh, in the Indo-Gangetic plain, basically, in Punjab, Haryana, and you know, part of UP. But this green revolution, uh, the second green revolution, what we have been talking, can happen in the eastern part, covering West Bengal, Bihar, Jharkhand, Odisha, and this particular region. What is happening is most of the cases, these particular regions are basically monocrop. So in Kharif season, we, they are cultivating rice. But rice being a very uh, water-loving uh, plant, uh, uh, post-rice uh, time also, there are some moistures that is being left. So this, uh, pro uh, this particular program is uh, uh, actually uh, targeting th those areas where there is uh, enough moisture for the uh, post rise fallow and there is enough moisture in the soil so that they can take a second crop, maybe a short duration crop. 
So for that particular uh, purpose, they have for this particular purpose, they have basically uh, mapped the Kharif rice area and Rabi cropped area. So rest of the area, the red is basically the uh, post Kharif rice value area. In this particular area, based on different other uh, parameters like uh, soil parameters, what is the water holding capacity, what is the depth of the soil, and also the what is the moisture in the soil, and what would be the daily mean and uh, temperature and other weather parameters, they come up with some kind of an area favorable for the second crop in the rabi season in the post Kharif fall. So these are uh, this is one of the criteria and. Uh, for all these particular uh, six districts, one, two, three, four, five, six districts of uh, Eastern India, basically they have given the mandal by mandal uh, whether this particular area is congenial to take a small pulse crop, short durational pulse crop. So these particular things are also very really important for crop intensification in the Eastern India. Another important uh, uh, program is the coordinated program on horticultural crop. Uh, so, and management. Like we call it coordinated program on horticultural assessment and management using geoinformatics. That is short form is Chamath. Importantly, till now we have concentrated in the field crop only. And then, uh, uh, but as far as the economic yield is concerned or the remuneration is concerned or the return on investment is concerned agriculture horticultural crops are much more higher uh, than, than the field crops so there, there is a mission for horticultural uh, crops have started and they require the baseline analysis they even do not know how much area is under horticulture so based on that the main target here is to map the horticultural orchards particularly for the fruits and vegetable crops so what we have done, this is a typical crops grown in a contiguous area with different spacing with highly managed uh, uh, land use conditions. So if you see in the if, uh, in the list four, uh, this is the uh, kind of a uh, um, image what we get for this is a mango plantation, this is a uh, oil palm plantations. By the canopy and the spacing of the crop, we can very well identify the texture is different for mango and for oil palm. So this is in the list four. Uh, it gives a color, it gives the texture. So if we can merge it, so very well we can classify it, or at least visually, in mango and oil palm. So based on this, we have gone, um, used the object-oriented classification to take care of the color, the uh, vegetation figure, and also the texture part. So using that, we have basically uh, mapped the banana plantation of Anandapur, and then your um, in the Godavari region, we have mapped the cashew plantations, mango plantations, and then the whole of the tea gardens were mapped uh, over the northeastern region, and also the coffee plantation in Karnataka, rubber in Tripura and other parts. So based on that, right now, importantly, we have the base layer map in majority of the horticultural crops, not only tabulated value, we have a spatial map of it. And if when you are mapping a horticulture crop, it stays for at least few years because uh, the orchards are very permanent in nature. So the, after that, the next phase, what we have been trying is to get uh, the monitoring system of the horticulture crop and what uh, the production uh, forecasting of the horticulture, which is a very really, um, tough job because it is not, it doesn't follow uh, as uh, we are following for the field, field crops, it is altogether a different ballgame. So another important part, what we have been uh, uh, doing is that uh, we have, uh, in collaboration with many of the ministries, in, where we are getting what uh, their requirements, and based on their requirements, we have been trying to cater to them using our technologies. One of the success stories uh, during this inter interaction is with the Ministry of Textile. Uh, and uh, uh, particularly, uh, the nodal agency is the uh, Cotton Corporation of India and the Jute Corporation of India. So these are the all fiber. This is a fiber crop, but it is under Ministry of Textile, not under Ministry of Agriculture. So this fiber crop, what they want, that they want a very robust monitoring system. 
and uh, they don't know anything about all this remote sensing. They don't have a remote sensing that uh, sale or analyst or experts and all that. So what we have done is that, say for example, for jute crop, we have developed a jute crop information and decision support system using mobile-based field observation. Of course, later on we can or we have also inducted satellite and other weather parameters, but purely based on mobile-based applications, which gives you the navigational support, photo analytics, and some kind of attributes. <clears throat> so we have developed a tailor-made uh, mobile app for jute crop. This has been done after at least two, three, two to three iteration with a discussion with the user agency like uh, jute corporation of India, cotton corporation, what is their requirement, what they want. So right now, the we have not only having this uh, jute surveillance system, we can have we are having the jute crop, uh, crop cutting experimental app along with uh, a module of this jute field data collections, jute seed production, and geotagging of their assets, means their factories and all these things. All are basically in one particular mobile app. Importantly, as far as the attributes of the jute mobile crop surveillance is concerned, we have taken all the soil to the rainfall to the, based on their perceptions, crop types, uh, showing time, their crop growth information, crop condition information, crop stress information, height information, which is very important for jute crop, and the expected fiber yields and water source nearby. All these informations are basically collected and most of them are in the drop-down menu. There is no manual interventions or manual writing, only a drop-down menu. So it is a, uh, what is the unique features? It is all these uh, attributes are iteratively fixed by the discussion with the partner organization. It's highly objective in nature, and most of the attributes are in the drop-down base and minimum manual error, and ready for analysis uh, in the web analytics and post-facto analysis, and reporting. So we have also developed a data analytics platform for them. They can um, select the state, district, and the time of interest. Uh, uh, from few weeks to few fortnights, and they can view the observations of the mobile data and generate a report. When they will be generating a report, they will be generating the spatial distribution of the data from that particular area and a particular table where week by week how many observations were there and what is the age of the crop, what is the height of the crop, percentage of irrigations, whether the crop is in good condition or not, all these parameters which are very important to them at a glance to assess the crop prospect of a particular uh, district are being highlighted and week by week how it is changing this kind of uh, table, table they will generate. And along with, of course, the photographs are there for corroborations. Not only this, the same things we can map, uh, put it in the graphical format to understand quickly. So district by district, this kind of uh, reports can be generated in a click and in near real time. More the data, more will be the reliability. More is the distribution of the data, more will be the reliability of the uh, assessment. So based on that, uh, not only this, they can also flag where actually the disease based and what different stress are happening. Uh, say for example, for cotton crop in Maharashtra. So this has become very popular and now they have been, I think thousands and thousands of informations they are loading to the Google and uh, getting these particular services. Another important uh, which I would like to touch upon is the pro crop insurance that is the Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana. So uh, in the crop insurance value chain from the rate making or the premium rate of a particular insurance, uh, crop insurance to the timely settlement of the claim, we have an intervention in total value chain of the crop uh, insurance. Starting from the rate making, enrollment and expansion and compliance of the farmers, crop monitoring for prevented uh, showing risk, mid-season adversity, then how we conduct the CC, the mechanism of CC means crop cutting experiment, crop damage for due to different natural calamities, localized damage, post-harvest damage, and then plant and timely claim settlements. In every aspect, we can have this in the technology intervention, particularly the geospatial. Uh, uh, I, I'll just go through in brief. Suppose for a rate making, the more the risk in a particular place, more will be the premium. So, what I mean to say, the cyclone damage of the rice crop will be high in Andhra Pradesh coast or Odisha coast than in the Punjab. 
So this particular risk is high in this particular region. So their premium would be also high. How much high? How much is the risk? They can be objectively assessed using long-term database of meteorological data. Say, for example, meteorological drought hazards from long-term uh, rainfall data. And what is the vulnerability of the drought? What is the different land use, land cover, or thematic layers? And the flood hazard mapping. All these things basically fuse together to get uh, a particular uh, area, how much risk it is bearing for an insurer. So then it helps in uh, fixing their uh, premium. Then, of course, the monitoring of the crop. What it checks, it checks the discrepancy. Whether you have insured for cotton, how you, have you gone uh, grow cotton or other crops? So moral, moral hazard, prevented showing, late showing, early showing, all these things can also be monitored using satellite data. Next is, not only this, uh, we are also, Inter our intervention is so much, so much so that instead of these, all the scheme is basically yield reduction or yield uh, compensation scheme. But it, uh, basically, uh, assessing yield of the crop itself is a problem because of a huge crop cutting experiment, and there are many other things which uh, the modeling part are also having some problems. So instead of yield, we have also gone for a crop health factor or crop performance factor based insurance. It is implemented in uh, Bengal. Uh, we call it Bangla Shosho Bima Yojana. And it, the important uh, the, is alternative, it, is, uh, it, it, it has become very popular and one of the success stories. So, important uh, thing is that the CHF or crop performance. Index is a biophysical composite index derived from multiple parameters of crop status from sowing to harvesting. It is a quantitative and objective measurement of the crop health and its overall performance, and it's a close proxy of the crop yield. So, area yield index may be transformed as area crop performance index. So, this actually reduces the huge workload of our particular state for crop cutting experiment as well as it is also helping in objective assessment of the crop performance and timely settlement of the crop. So this is a uh, crop health index for jute crop where these are the parameters which are basically used and fused together to come out with a single index and uh, successfully implemented over West Bengal region. And uh, as far as the damage is con con concerned, we have uh, assessed many kind of damage like uh, hailstorm damage, uh, uh, non-seasonal rainfall damage, then Amphan cyclone damage, then your um, uh, drought damage and all these things. So this is a simple example. If you can take a pre-event and post-event observations of a potato crop and see how much area is being damaged by the hailstorm. We have used some uh, procedure for this uh, post and pre-event changes of uh, a reflectance uh, or the crop vigor, uh, then uh, combining it into different decision matrix and come out with a different area, uh, level of crop damage. So, important another important part is the crop cutting experiment. Uh, our intervention is in two ways where to cut the crop for objective assessment of the yield. So, the distribution of the crop cutting locations, we have done it. And we have followed a smart sampling technique, which includes the crop proxy and uh, assess, uh, and it dividing it into different strata. And then based on that strata, we can also follow the stratified random sampling and give the point and also the navigational support of it. It was first implemented in Odisha and later on uh, being upscaled by NNCFC for different other, other uh, states also. Not only that, we Verification of CC is, uh, is, can also be done. Whether the CC is, has done objectively using mobile app data, we can also control it. And after getting the data, whether it is following the crop, pink, uh, crop health index or not, that can also be a very important, vicarious uh, verification of the uh, crop cutting uh, experiments performance. Another important uh, thing uh, is, is in the digital agriculture, one of the um, major program that we have been doing is the Maha Agritech. This is for Maharashtra, starting from crop surveillance to the crop inventory, to the crop yield monitoring, for drought, for crop planning, advisory, soil health, horticulture, crop insurance, and crop statistics. 
all in one platform. So you click anything, everything, every layers are available. You can play with that particular layer, get some kind of informations, and uh, it helps in decision making. So uh, this is uh, already hosted by uh, Maharashtra State uh, Agricultural Department, and they uh, they have been very uh, successfully implemented for the last I think four years. They have been uh, implementing these particular things, and this is one of the flagship program for uh, which basically government of India is promoting for other state to uh, follow. <coughs> Another, uh, uh, and still now, what we have been discussing is on the crop yield and crop economic uh, aspect. So, what about the crop biomass? These are is this the waste? But uh, what we have done that we have been listening to the um, stubble burning pollutions and all these things, and our COP twenty six commitments that we have to um, go for the renewable energy um, solutions and uh, we need to be carbon neutral by 2070s so this biomass based energy solutions can be a very good solution one of the good solutions for uh, this kind of a target so what we have done is that all india level we have mapped the uh, biomass potential from a crop residue for rice wheat cotton and sugarcane we have uh, basically followed a protocol where the district level crop statistics are basically converted into the district level gauss, gauss biomass and using satellite based uh, different uh, proxies we downscale it to one kilometer uh, level so what we have right now is the one kilometer by one kilometer level the amount of total biomass that is being generated by a particular crop these four crops of course and what is the surplus means after utilization how much is being left in the field so that particular things are basically hosted over Bhuban and our new uh, uh, portal is developed called Bhuban Jai Burja, which is uh, which help to visualize analytics, query and reporting of these things. So uh, it will be useful for planning of the residue, uh, uh, planning the residue harvest, collection, storage, and transportation for successful commissioning of the biofuel plant, and also supports the policymaker for agro-based biofuel or biomass power plants. So this is a kind of a biomass potential from these four crops, what we got uh, over India. So, uh, uh, so right now, uh, I'll go for a particular applications of uh, Bhuvan, the particularly this uh, Bhuvan Jaivur Ja, so if you just uh, write uh, in Google, Bhuvan Jaivurja, it will directly go to this particular gateway of Bhuvan and you can uh, click it and this is the uh, basically the front page of special information system of biomass potential from crop residue, we call it Bhuvan Jaivurja. So it will give you an introduction and then along with that it will give you its uh, uh, content and the features and a small flow diagram of the methodology form. So you can click the visit the site. So and uh, these are the scopes and limitations and then you can continue with it. So it will directly sit in this particular uh, Bhuvan platform and if you see there are biomass resources in this, we have the gross biomass, surplus biomass, and bioenergy potentials. Gross biomass is the total biomass in kiloton per square kilometer. You can go on for kharif rice, for rabi rice, for wheat, for cotton, for sugarcane. You can load it. And like, same way, this is the legend where it is showing the low to high biomass of a particular area. And of course, you can also go for surplus biomass that is actually available for different crops. We have loaded it. And that this is in terms of energy terms. That is in gigajoule per square kilometer. And this is the legend of it. So this also you can load it. All the layers you can load in Google. It takes some, some time to load it online. So these are the layers available till now. We are trying to increase it further for uh, Bhuvan. Uh, and then 
Second part, second is the natural resources where you have this land use land cover map. It is in the background, and you can also see it. These are these are the land use land cover map uh, of uh, a particular uh, this whole of, of India. This is the this is this is build up area, Kharif, BJ, double crop timber. All the legends are there already, and of course the hydrological layers like main river courses. And then you know surface water bodies. These are the river courses, and the surface water bodies. These are there in the uh, for your kind reference also. So all the major dams and surface water bodies are also there. So next is another base layer that is your administrative boundary that is there, and all the settlements are also there. Important part is the query part. So how can you do some query of it? Why do you um, go for a query? Query is required. Suppose if you would like to use this biomass and uh, basically uh, uh, establish a biofuel plant or bio biomass pellet plant, you want to use it for energy purposes. So for, so for that particular region, suppose if you zoom it, you can see its detailing of it, how, how it is being distributed. So there are three, four steps for uh, for this particular uh, query. First, you have to uh, make a point of interest. That is, here you would like to put your power plant or the factories or whatsoever. You can put it in two ways. Either you can put a, a give a lat long or you can simply draw uh, in, a, in a map this particular uh, point of interest. Suppose uh, if you start uh, identifying the point, then you have to go to the fetch area. Uh, fetch area means from where you would like to draw all this biomass. You can go on, uh, uh, in a uh, buffer area like 5 km, 10 km, or 50 km buffer area. Or uh, you can also draw a polygon for this. And then you analyze them. This is a three simple step for query. So say for example, if you, I would like to enter from this particular area, I would like to put a biomass power plant over here. So click here and then finish. So here it will have a bubble. So this is your point of interest. So this is your point of interest. Now suppose I enter a buffer from where I would like to collect the biomass. Say for example, it is uh, 10 kilometers. So, for example, it is uh, 50 kilometers. Uh, this is the area where I'd like to. You can also make a polygon based on your choice also. Then, uh, then you have to click analyze. So, quickly it will uh, basically analyze all these uh, layers and all these um, um, land use classes, all these um, administrative layers, and uh, come out with you with a report uh, about the prospect of this particular site, how much uh, biomass is available. Say, for example, it has already done it. So, fetch area is this much of kilometer square, and the coordinate is this. It is very. It is in Punjab and uh, Sangrur uh, uh, area. Cities uh, nearest city is Sunam. And nearest railway station is uh, nearly three kilometers, and petrol petrol pump is also 3.8 kilometers. And they have developed a particular uh, table where the gross biomass and surplus biomass and bioenergy potential from kharif rice, rabi rice, wheat, cotton, and sugarcane. How much it is available? So the area is not having any sugarcane area, but from cotton, wheat, rabi, and uh, rabi area is also not there because they are wheat growing areas. So kharif. Uh, rice, wheat, cotton, and sugar, and how much uh, uh, gross and surplus biomass is available, and what is the energy potential of it. So, it is uh, this table is being generated from over this particular fetch area, and this is a land use land cover uh, composition. You can download the report, and they'll, they'll compose a um, uh, three page uh, PDF report, and uh, it will take a few. Uh, half a minute time for composing all these things based on your internet speed and uh, you can go with uh, uh, now it is uh, doing it the preparing all these uh, reports and uh, it will be downloadable uh, afterwards and uh, this will you can you can further 
study it and it is now ready for downloading so click downloading and ultimately it is being downloaded so if you click it it will give you a three page report where uh, uh, the, all these informations are available this table is available this is the land use land cover classes or particular chosen area and this is the compositions so this will give you a first cut informations about the potential of the biomass that is available of course for the selected crops which we have already done we are trying to put more and more crops into it so that other minor crops can also be included over here and also the logistics where uh, as far as the railway is concerned petrol pump and all the things uh, so this is the first level things what we have done it has been highly appreciated by different energy companies and because they don't have no data, no no baseline data to start with at least they are starting with this particular uh, uh, data and further on um, doing uh, further uh, uh, your query to this small area because their area of operation is hardly 10 to 15 kilometers so uh, this is a very good tool for assisting the renewable energy solutions using crop residue biomass i think uh, if I, I i encourage every person to uh, just go through this particular site and explore what are the different other uh, things are available in different places of course we are uh, in this uh, this is a first phase this is the first kind of information we will further strengthen this particular uh, site because this is one of the important uh, uh, energy applications as far as the agriculture is concerned. So with this, I'll uh, thank uh, the organizer for, uh, for giving me the opportunity and sharing my experiences. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Abhishek, sir, uh, for your uh, valuable talk and uh, a small demo on the Jalwood application. Uh, we have uh, uh, two questions actually related to your talk. The first question is like, uh, what are the early warning uh, systems work? Uh, probably is referring to the uh, agriculture drought here. And what type of parameters are considered for this one? Early warning system, as far as weather is concerned, we are not the nodal person. Uh, IMD is the uh, organization for early warning of uh, weather parameters. And for short term, there are three kinds of early warning system. Now casting means within few hours to one day, and then uh, short term, uh, short, short short to medium range weather for forecasting that is for few days to uh, one week or 15 days, and then long term. All these things are basically related to the weather. Using these weather parameters, basically um, we are giving this early warning to any kind of a disaster. So the nodal agency is IMD. Uh, and uh, for short term, uh, for as far as the drought is concerned, short term, uh, short, uh, short to medium term or uh, weather for, uh, forecasting is uh, is the key parameter. And in CMRWF, uh, that is the nodal parameter for this. Uh, till now, early warning of the uh, drought is not in operational. But of course. Uh, as, as we have been um, observing the soil moisture and uh, the plant water content, we get some kind of a uh, lead time to, uh, to basically declare the drought is progressing. But the drought itself is a very creepy uh, kind of a you know, disaster. So it is uh, very slow in nature. And uh, suppose uh, uh, when you, it is being detected at at least it has it has done the damage. So uh, unless uh, unlike other disasters which occurs in very fast, drought actually progresses very slowly. So very important. So it is very difficult to pinpoint this is the onset and this is the withdrawal of the drought. It is it is right now this procedure is not means uh, finalized. So we have a perception of a particular area for a particular country based on that we have we have been following something. But it is there is no universal rule for this. So as far as the early uh, warning of drought is concerned, I can say it is not in operational till now. Are in this going on. Okay, sir. The, the next question is: uh, uh, Are we doing 
explain the micronutrient mapping of soils? Uh, so can we locate that using the Bowen platform? Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. Uh, this uh, micronutrient mapping and all these things are uh, not done uh, from space platform. Uh, what is happening is that uh, we have the soil health card data. Soil health card data also uh, basically having this um, uh, your major nutrients, macronutrients, and along with uh, physical and chemical parameters, and micronutrients are also incorporated. So using this uh, point data, basically we are using GIS platform for ge geostatistics and then making it a surface. So based on that, uh, uh, some of, in some of the cases it has been generated, but I do not know whether in Bhuvan it is available for public consumptions or not. Uh, thank you, sir. I think one more question related to the uh, stubble burning. Uh, probably I think this was uh, uh, shown in the first day one, like. Uh, uh, if I'm right, so you are. Uh, I mean, you answer, sir. I mean, are we giving a, a real-time data on stubble burning with lat-long detail? Yeah, yeah. There are three things for stubble burning. One is uh, actifier locations, means uh, uh, when the when they lit the fire over uh, over stubble, basically it burns for a few hours, too few days also depending on the biomass and how it is smoothering or it is an active fire or not so this particular thermal anomaly being detected by the thermal range of our satellite and uh, we can with some omission and commissions uh, we can detect the active fire locations which are operationally given to uh, it is available in google also second part is that okay active fire is a basically a diagnostics it shows that yes some fire is occurring then the comes how or what is the area which is being burnt so the second part is the burnt area the burnt area mapping actually is a ecv also essential climatic variable right so um, this we have been giving uh, at the end of the season so this much area is being burnt but we have the Mm, some R and D is in in house R and D is going on where we can give it the progression of burnt area. Means week by week or fortnight by fortnight, the area is is being burnt can be mapped based on the charcoal signature. Third is okay. It is the area is burnt, but how much biomass is being burnt? So that also has a very big uh, impact on pollutions and other things. We can convert it in, into the GHG gases if we can assess the how much biomass is being burnt. So that is the third aspect of it. So still, uh, uh, we have a procedure to assess the how much biomass is being burnt. It has not been done till now operationally. Operationally, still is uh, the active fire locations and end of the season burnt area. But biomass burnt also is uh, we, we, it is we are capable to do. So after some kind of a validation and uh, two three years, I think we need to run it to basically do some kind of a um, uncertainty analysis. Then then we can further do. So these are the three things. And of course, if you know the biomass burnt, you can can always convert it in how much greenhouse gas is being emitted. And then it will be also a precursor for uh, transport model where it is going. So this is the kind of a flow chain of the stubble burn. Thank you, sir. I think we'll take last question. Uh, this is related to the Jalvurja. Uh, the fetch area and this uh, site location uh, you have given 10 kilometers, sir. Is there any restrictions or limitations for selecting the fetch area? No, there is no restriction. Uh, as uh, But uh, you, you have to understand the biomass is a bulky material. It is very difficult to uh, brought the biomass into the factories. Uh, as the biodensity is very low, suppose a truck is having a capacity of 10 ton, actually you, got, you, you end up in carrying 2 ton. So it is highly inefficient in nature. So that's why they don't go uh, um, beyond a um, 50 kilometer buffer area. Then the economy would be, uh, it is not economical to collect the biomass from very high, uh, very far away places. So uh, we have discussed it with the, the um, 
actual people who have been doing it. So they told that our operating radius efficiently is up to 10 to 15 kilometers. As you go further away, uh, actually the economy is uh, low to bring it to the factories. So there is no as such uh, as such restriction to this, but I'll uh, urge you to be within 50 kilometers of range because that is the practicality. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I think you have answered them uh, uh, quite well. So thank you very much uh, for your talk, uh, for your demo, and also your uh, 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 kind answering to the questions that were posted in this uh, uh, session. Uh, and uh, definitely we look forward to, for your talk in the coming uh, webinars also. So thank you very much, Abhishek, sir. Uh, and there was one more question related to the early warning of landslide. I think that we'll take that. Uh, uh, I think uh, other experts the are speaker. there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure, sir. Sure. Thank uh, next you. Next week is related to the. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, so the next talk will be on the disaster management support and uh, uh, some use cases. So, to uh, give this talk, we have uh, uh, Abhinav Kumar. Uh, he is uh, working, he is a scientist working in the disaster management support group. Uh, Abhinav, you are there? Uh, yes, am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. Uh, Abhinav, welcome uh, and uh, over to you for your uh, talk. Thank, thank you so much. So uh, to begin with, I'd like to uh, uh, give a small presentation and thereafter, uh, the, uh, thereafter the presentation, I'll take you to the uh, uh, Ruan website and show you all the services under disaster management catalog, which are uh, available to the public in general. Just let me know if my presentation is uh, visible to everyone. I should. So uh, to begin with, uh, is my uh, presentation visible to everyone? Yeah, it is visible, Abhinav. Go ahead. It is visible. Perfect. Yeah. So I am Abhinav Shukla. I'm working as a scientist in disaster management support group uh, at National Remote Sensing. Uh, Abhinav, you can hide that. Uh, Indian research organization. Uh, basically, uh, are a supporting entity. Abhinav, you can hide that uh, small icon that is popping up on your screen. I don't see an icon now. No, no, when you're putting in the uh, presentation mode, no, there is a Microsoft Teams card of one uh, small uh, that window is coming. You can hide it. Yeah, now it is fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Actually, there's some lag, I believe. So that may be the reason. So uh, primarily, uh, we at Disaster Management support group are a supporting entity to all the disasters. The nodal agency for all the disasters in India is basically Ministry of Home Affairs. So we uh, tend to help all the agencies uh, which are working in disaster management, be it central, be it the state agencies, be it NDRF, through the space-based uh, space technologies. So to begin with, I'd like to give you a glimpse of why uh, this kind of uh, uh, space-based inputs are required. Some people say that a lot of cost goes into it and all. If you look at this image, this basically tells you the pre and the post image of flash floods in Tapo 1 that, that happened uh, last year, uh, in February 2021. Uh, unfortunately, many people died. And uh, this, these kind of areas, if you see, are highly inaccessible and uh, our information, uh, reaching of information becomes a very trivial task, it, uh, a very difficult task, actually. So. Uh, Space-based technologies basically help you to identify such kind of disasters that happen in very inaccessible areas or which have a magnitude of kilometers and kilometers, which otherwise will become very difficult to assess in terms of the uh, kind of disaster that has happened, be it uh, the material disaster or be it uh, 
human disaster. So basically for damage assessment aspect and uh, immediate relief and rescue operations, these kind of inputs are highly appreciated by uh, the concerned rescue operation. If you see this image, you'll be able to see the pre-image, which will pop up now. Uh, if you see this image, you see Dhali Ganga River and all the sluice gates and everything else. But in the post phase, uh, in February, after the disaster, right after the disaster happened, you would see all the debris deposition, the sluice gates are filled up. Till what height is the sluice gate, gate covered up? That tells you the kind of height of the sludge that came along with the uh, rock slide that happened in Chamoli. Now, uh, in, at, uh, in DMSG Disaster Management Support Group, we, we work in all the phases of disasters, be it preparedness, response, mitigation, and R&D. So those of you who are working in any of these particular phases in, in specific can contact us at any point of time. So as far as the preparedness goes, we work in spatial flood early warning system, uh, runoff at national level, low-lying area mapping uh, for urban preps primarily. We have done it for Hyderabad, Chennai, Mumbai, and uh, we are in process of doing it for other places also. Thereafter, we've done flood vulnerability assess assessment also, and we also have a huge repository of the database, and that has been up together in the form of a project that has come up as a national database for emergency management. In response phase, we... Uh, Immediately, as soon as a uh, disaster strikes, we prepare near real-time maps for floods and cyclones. If there is a user request from any, any agency or any kind of uh, department, we also uh, entertain that. We give them all kind of feedback. For example, the uh, uh, shipping ministry asked us uh, in recent times, well, there was a, a ship that got fired uh, near the Kandla post, and earlier there was one near the uh, Endor post. So these kind of disasters, oil leak and uh, ship fire, etc. are also detained. We also extend support to international agencies uh, under various frameworks like Sentinel Asia uh, and disaster charters. So uh, it is not just India that we support, we support the neighboring countries and worldwide, not just the neighboring ones. As far as the mitigation uh, goes, while there is no uh, ongoing disaster, we also uh, look into the repository that we have. We do various kinds of assessments, a scientific flood prone area assessment being one. And uh, thereafter, the bank erosion and deposition studies are also being done. Uh, flood hazard atlas uh, for various states have already been prepared and some are being prepared. For Odisha, Bihar and uh, uh, Assam, it has already been released while it is in process of being uh, released for uh, AP, West Bengal and uh, UP. Uh, aggregate flood uh, maps have been prepared for other states of the country. And as far as the research and development goes, so we are uh, in process of automating our entire flood mapping mechanism. Uh, we, we are also working towards urban floods, which is a very, very complex process. Uh, it was in, involves a lot of uh, elements from uh, municipal corporations to uh, meteorological to uh, morphological to ever expanding uh, urban uh, feature. Then we also conduct trainings and workshops, and uh, we are also in process of making uh, 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 mirror endem for Ministry of Home Affairs. So if you look at, I'll, I'll skip this slide. Basically, we work of disasters, and that is what's being communicated over here as soon as the disaster strikes. And um, if you look at the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction, one very important component is use of space technology for achieving all the uh, goals of uh, Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction. And as far as India is concerned, uh, it is primarily uh, NRSC, which is working towards that kind of uh, goal. And uh, one question pops up in the minds of people who have not actually been uh, seeing the uh, uh, use of space technologies. Why do we require it? How does it help you? And what, what, what are its implications? So if you look at this, this is a slide that I usually keep for uh, 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 the beginners. Uh, uh, but it gives a very lucid picture of all the kind of uh, outputs that you get be it for any application. So there is a relative motion between the Earth and the satellite. And uh, uh, due to this relative motion, uh, a polar orbiting satellite is able to capture the entire Earth uh, within some time frame. The uh, one uh, loophole is that uh, since the, both the things are moving together, there will be some area which will be covered and some area may not be. So it is not possible to cover all the disasters 24-7 uh, uh, without a constellation of satellites. If you have multiple satellites, then you can keep an eye on the Earth 24-7, and that will help you to monitor various disasters. 
24/7. So uh, here, if you see this particular uh, satellite is moving around the Earth, and uh, the yellow color strip that you see is the swath of the satellite that is covering that particular patch of the Earth, and the data is being sent to uh, the concerned uh, uh, space agency, uh, which is basically forms the ground segment. So we have ground segments and stationed at Antarctica uh, and uh, Shadnagar in NRSE and uh, various other places globally as well. So once a disaster happens, uh, this remotely sensed data basically uh, uh, tells you uh, the kind of damage that has happened by analyzing the pre and the post image. Look at, in, at this image, you will be able to see the pre and the post image of Srinagar floods 2014. So before the floods, the dark color that you see is basically water and it is flowing in the Jail channel, Jhelum channel. And, uh, Thereafter, after the floods strike, all the muddy color that you see is again water, but you would see that it has inundated all the residential areas as well. So uh, this kind of immediate response basically is possible using this technology and all these kinds of inputs are basically provided to the concerned uh, agency. Now, uh, as far as disaster is concerned, we do not have specification with respect to one particular satellite. We basically try to use whatever data we have. So if you see uh, the Satellites, they tend to work in various, uh, uh, they tend to utilize various wavelengths. Depending upon the application, you would be utilizing one particular wavelength. For example, microwave, the satellites which operate in this particular band or the wavelength, they have a, a, a benefit of basically uh, uh, penetrating the clouds. So these are basically more useful during the flood season, ongoing monsoons and all. Most of the floods which are mapped are used, uh, mapped using microwave data. Thereafter, in visible spectrum, if you want to do some kind of agricultural assessment or any kind of uh, high optical uh, data uh, related application, then you would uh, go towards the visible spectrum and infrared as well. Uh, the other gamma X-ray uh, uh, satellites are basically used for deep space missions and uh, not primarily for uh, the Earth aspect. But yes, as far as the whole entire space gamut is concerned, uh, all these wavelengths are basically utilized by all the scientists throughout the global community. Uh, at NRC, uh, the disaster management uh, support system basically works in a proper uh, chain. Once an alert is generated, the satellite data is programmed, the data is analyzed, it is integrated with the database, and all the kinds of maps are prepared, be it a flood map, persistence map, valued products uh, at various scales, and the data is finally disseminated through various geo portals like Google and Endem. So I will be showing you uh, the kind of outputs that we have generated uh, and the kind of data that is hosted on uh, Google as well. So these are the space-based uh, and ground assets for disaster risk reduction. I believe you must have come across this slide somewhere during this uh, uh, training. So if you see uh, right from the times when our space uh, program initiated, we have data of one kilometer resolution. One kilometer spatial resolution means you'll be able to see only the objects which are having uh, the dimensions of one kilometer by one kilometer. And from those times, we have come up to a level where we are able to identify the objects which are less than one meter in size as well. So these are uh, sub-meter uh, level, uh, uh, pixel level uh, uh, information that you have right now. And thereafter, you also have uh, aerial uh, born laser terrain mapper, and uh, you have the aerial mapping also. Uh, with ISRO, we have various kind of uh, uh, information. We have the geostationary satellite. We have the uh, lower Earth orbit satellite. You also have got uh, spacecraft wherein uh, uh, some cameras can be fitted and mounted, and those can be flown over uh, area. And uh, we are in, in process of. Uh, 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 doing the same with UAVs as well. And then all these things are integrated together and everything goes in synergistic uh, application with AWS, DWR, and Ocean Buoys. Uh, so automatic weather stations and Doppler weather radar and Ocean Buoys also help in assessing uh, the overall impact with uh, respect to one particular, any, any disaster asset. So uh, this is one uh, image to show you the difference between optical and SR image. Both the images have been taken. Uh, for the same area, uh, above and below. If you look here, some feature you are able to see where the clouds is not present and where the clouds are uh, basically not, uh, when the, even if the clouds are there, our uh, synthetic aperture radar microwaves are basically able to penetrate it and you are able to see the ground information also. So uh, basically during monsoon season, we tend to utilize more of SAR than the optical images because the 
entire country is covered with uh, clouds and specifically the area wherever uh, some kind of major uh, uh, hydrological disaster happens. So uh, depending upon the application, we tend to use the optical image as well as the SAR image. Uh, as far as the floods and cyclones are concerned, uh, we have been seeing an increasing trend of the floods in the country. Uh, while in 2017, there were uh, eight states which were flooded, uh, reported flood, and where we were able to map floods on a larger scale, uh, barring very minor floods here and there. Uh, in, by 2020 and 2021, we have seen that almost 15 states have been flooded, and the number of districts, uh, which were 108 in 2017, have increased to 177. And it has further increased uh, in 2021. And in 2022 itself, we are seeing uh, uh, floods in Godavari during July itself, which is usually not the case. So uh, the kind of disasters that have uh, happened, uh, they have aggravated uh, in the recent times. And uh, the, uh, uh, the absolute nature of disaster, as well as the absolute magnitude of disaster has also increased. So uh, one. One uh, important question is, uh, how does it uh, help you uh, assessing one particular disaster? This image basically gives you a very good uh, information. So if you see here, the progression and the recession of floods that have happened over one particular area will be known to you. If you see that uh, data starts from uh, 11th of August and goes on till September, how the floods are progressing receded in uh, Bihar uh, is very much prominently visible and the entire uh, coverage is more than 500 kilometers. So the synoptic coverage is also seen to you using uh, these kind of uh, satellite-based imagery. And these are some of the images from uh, the pre and the post uh, images. So these are also provided to the state government and state agencies and also to the concerned uh, uh, relief commissioners and uh, rescue operation people uh, to assess the kind of uh, inundation that has happened in a particular area, the kind of villages which are inundated. And these are also provided to national uh, NDRF uh, battalions, which are there on the grounds. Um, and uh, these intra-state uh, uh, kind of disasters that happen, for example, interstate disasters like floods in Kaveri River and Krishna River that happened, uh, Krishna, for example, here. Uh, the pre-image that you see is basically Maharashtra and Karnataka uh, area before the floods, uh, sometime during April. And then in July, uh, in, when the floods impacted, the kind of uh, Damage it led, and a lot of sugarcane and uh, uh, different crop types were uh, feeds were inundated, and a lot of damage happened in that particular area. And uh, this is uh, one case study for uh, Cochin, uh, wherein floods ha happened during uh, the, the uh, once in hundred year return period floods in Kerala, mm -hmm. wherein a lot of uh, flooding was seen uh, over this particular uh, the entire state altogether. We were able to see uh, the floods which were there in uh, Cochin uh, using microwave as well as when the clouds they were gone, then using the optical data. Yeah. As far as the urban floods are concerned, we also provide some sort of support uh, using high resolution data. You see here, these are Cartosat data over Chennai in Tamil Nadu, and we are also able to assess the kind of floods that happened uh, in. Uh, the other pockets. So some of these were experimental products wherein floods were derived using uh, the higher backscatter that you receive from uh, microwave data. Uh, because of double bounds uh, at times, uh, uh, since the surface starts acting as a specular surface wherein the water is present, uh, and uh, this leads to higher double bounds from uh, the urban pockets. And this increase in intensity was basically used as a measure to create these kind of uh, maps using SAR imagery. This was a uh, one of its kind study, and uh, since uh, not a lot of ground uh, assessment was done, so this was basically called uh, experimental product. In the beginning, when it was sent, later uh, we uh, basically asked the people to realize that uh, whatever our assessment was was quite accurate to the ground reality. Uh, thereafter, uh, high resolution data is also. Uh, useful uh, at times after the clouds have receded and here in this image you see uh, the kind of floods that impacted uh, Jammu and Kashmir. This is a very posh locality where the assembly complex and high court is situated. Uh, using these kind of images you will be able to assess not just the kind of floods that happen in a particular area, you will also be able to see the kind of uh, the depth of flooding. 
For example, this you see over here is basically the elevated roadway. Till what height the roadway is uh, uh, submerged, this tells you the level of water on all the surrounding area. And if water is, uh, is present over a larger area, then uh, it causes more uh, trouble as such. So all these kind of inputs are basically uh, disseminated using the one portal. Uh, if you see, uh, this is an example of uh, the same. I'll take you to the live study cases. Since we have a lot of data uh, spread across a, a larger time scale, we also integrate the data together and we uh, prepare flood hazard atlas for various states. Uh, this, for example, is uh, uh, a flood hazard atlas for uh, district level flood hazard atlas for uh, Odisha. Uh, you would see that almost 100 uh, satellite data sets were processed and uh, integrated together to see uh, the kind of uh, impact it does and uh, what are areas are come under a very high category, high category, then moderate or low category. This basically helps you in various uh, ways. One, it helps you to understand uh, what areas are prone to flooding and the state government can take active measures to uh, go ahead with some kind of structural or non-structural uh, assessment uh, uh, and uh, measures also. Uh, the farmers living in that area can be told to grow flood to tolerant crops. Uh, sustainable development can take place in that area rather than haphazard development. And uh, this tells you what uh, 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 the kind of uh, impact uh, the rainfall, the fluvial and the fluvial flooding has had over an area. And in future, what are the areas which are susceptible to such kind of uh, uh, flooding? So if you see here in Odisha, most of the uh, districts in the northern uh, belt are basically uh, flood prone, primarily due to the cyclones that impact at the uh, state. We also have a flood duration map since we have data, temporal data spread across a lot of time. So we prepare a flood duration map for various times, wherein uh, how long has water stayed over a particular area can also be told to you. So if a water stays at a particular area for two hours and at a different area for 20, 20 days, it will cause a, a different kind of impact altogether to the local community, to the local farmers and uh, the district and the state administration as well. So this basically tells you uh, the kind of uh, duration of flooding also. We also prepare the progression and recession maps. And uh, these are also disseminated using one data. Thereafter, uh, one very important uh, uh, person who is impacted by such a disaster is a farmer. So we have basically integrated the flood layers along with the uh, sown area or the normal uh, uh, crop area that we have. Uh, using land use land cover information and then this is integrated together to assess the kind of uh, uh, impact it may have on the uh, crops. How does it help you? It, it basically tells you the overall impact of disasters to the farmer. He can uh, uh, and then uh, some sort of relief is given to the farmer in terms of uh, say uh, insurance or some other aspect. Uh, one very important uh, uh, on the hindsight, if you look, the uh, important aspect is with respect to the food security. So once you realize that yes, a lot of crop has been damaged, you will be able to assess that what are the productivity losses that are going to come in future. And likewise, you can plan for the food security of the nation altogether if a major disaster ever happens like that. And uh, these are the flood hazard zonation atlases. The advantages and the disadvantages, uh, the uh, major advantages are basically I already talked about this uh, planning and relief scheme and uh, uh, for reservoir operations and uh, flood insurance as well. So this is overall uh, approach towards the flood hazard atlas. We have released three atlases uh, right now: Assam, uh, Odisha, and Bihar, and the rest are in pipeline. Uh, three are uh, uh, waiting release as well. Um, so this uh, atlas was released by uh, the Honorable Chief Minister of the State, Sri Navin Patnaik. Uh, statistics I have already talked about. As far as the cyclones are concerned, we also uh, monitor the cyclones, the track provided by uh, various agencies like JTWC, IMD, as well as uh, MOSDAC is populated on Bruin uh, to tell you the kind of uh, severity zones which are uh, near the track of the cyclone. And uh, this basically helps the state administration in planning the evacuation uh, over a particular area. Uh, and uh, once the cyclone strikes, we also provide them pre and the post image to understand the overall impact of the floods uh, that have happened. This is an example of Prithi cyclone in 2018, caused a massive disaster uh, in uh, the Ganjam area. 
And uh, if you see here, uh, you will be able to see uh, the uh, river, uh, uh, how the floods happened and the duration of the uh, flooding also. Where the floods were there for one day, two days, how it progressed, how it receded. In this animation, you will be able to see the flood progression and the flood recession also. On the red color is progression and the blue one is recession. Uh, during times of cyclone, you also uh, uh, do the infrastructure damage assessment, wherein all the infrastructures that are impacted are also uh, mapped and it is given to the concerned agencies. Uh, for this example, this is Kalinga Stadium in Odisha, wherein the rooftops of the Kalinga Stadium was blown away and uh, this information was immediately passed on. Uh, and more importantly, all the industries which uh, were affected in the Khorda district due to uh, funny cyclone were also mapped together and they, these information is, was also passed on. Uh, now, one important question is when a, when a disaster happens, who is the first, who is the first witness of the uh, disaster? You and I would be sitting in some, uh, uh, maybe some lab, maybe some office and you would get information from the ground. The first witness to a disaster is the victim. So we have anal and, uh, we have understood the importance of uh, providing a uh, dissemination um, mechanism of this information to the user. Hence, uh, the crowdsourcing has also been a very vital component of the disaster management in the country. As far as ISRO is concerned, we have um, prepared some mobile applications wherein information, this kind of applications are distributed to the user departments to be given to the normal people, public, or uh, your BDOs or concerned nodal officers, they will uh, go to that location wherein some damage has happened, click the photograph, and it is automatically geotagged. If they want to write some information with respect to it, they can uh, do it. Uh, if a category has been provided, then it will automatically get populated from the drop down they have to select it. And this information gets populated on dual board. Now, uh, the concerned uh, administration can basically look into this information and they, they can see that uh, these are the damages and these are the location of the damages which have happened. And once uh, uh, the mitigation happens, once the relief and rescue is over, they can also check whether the same has been addressed or not. So uh, this helps you in the verification and validation uh, also. As far as the uh, early warning is concerned, we are uh, also doing the flood early warning system. Uh, we have prepared uh, for various river basins. Godavari and Tapi are basically uh, being done under National Hydrology Project. So under uh, this web-enabled spatial early warning system, we are in, uh, uh, in, in a position to tell you, uh, forecast the hydrograph as well as the spatial pattern of flooding that will be happening over the various stations and over the entire stretch of the river basin. And uh, you will be in a position to see uh, the overall discharge that will be there in future times. So uh, taking the forecast rainfall data from IMD, we have basically prepared a flood uh, uh, early warning system and this will tell you the overall impact of uh, flooding that will happen due to the incoming uh, rains uh, and this basically gives you lead time to address the relief rescue and uh, evacuation planning as well. So this I will show you uh, through one portal also. As far as the landslides are concerned we, are, uh, we have been delivering uh, uh, in real time uh, uh, almost all the major information to the concerned state government and uh, nodal government agencies. This is uh, Yima Hasao uh, uh, district of Assam, where in North Kachar Hills, uh, recently some major uh, floods happened. Uh, and due to this uh, extreme precipitation, it led to uh, uh, the landslide as well. And uh, it was during uh, May, it was in news as well. You would see that all the areas where the landslides have happened were automatically mapped. And they were also sent to the concerned uh, agency to understand the overall uh, in fact, because while you are on the ground, this basically covers uh, multiple kilometers of data. So while being at one place, you will be able to address the overall impact of this kind of cyclones, uh, this kind of landslides that have, that have happened uh, over a area. Uh, Infrastructure-wise also, it, uh, this tells you a lot of information. For example, the road damage have also been annotated. The damaged rail lines have also been annotated. So rather than going to the place and seeing whether the uh, 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 raid lines are damaged, you can have that uh, information with the synoptic coverage of the satellites. As far as the forest fire are concerned, we have got automatic uh, forest fire uh, estimation uh, 
and otherwise also based on the user inputs we uh, uh, and the user information that is required we also provide these kind of outputs this is one important uh, uh, application uh, this tells you basically about the monitoring of the sariska forest fire that happened in march 2022 uh, all these kind of uh, information was passed on to the concerned forest fire department people and uh, the ministry of uh, environment and forest uh, to assess the kind of uh, burnt area that uh, was basically prevalent over there and uh, this also tells you the uh, direction in which the forest fire is propagating for effective forest fire management uh, planning of, by the concerned agencies the dissemination of all this information is using in the Bhuvan portal, I will take you to Bhuvan portal shortly. Uh, during COVID also, COVID time also, Bhuvan was effectively used. It is not just for these kind of disasters, but for pandemic also. We have seen that multiple applications were used uh, uh, using the Bhuvan portal and uh, various state governments also uh, sought support from Bhuvan for various kind of uh, applications. Mobile Raitu Bazaar, for example, uh, was also used uh, wherein uh, all the cars which are carrying the essentials were basically geotagged and this was information was available live to the people who were uh, stuck in their homes due to lockdown and citizen reporting and officer reporting and these kind of administrative uh, applications are also in place so i'll take you to the bhuvan portal uh, uh, once and to show you all the kind of things which are being made uh, so zoom for a Okay, so I'll take you to the Bhuvan portal. If you open Bhuvan, the homepage looks like this. Most of you would have come across this, you would have seen. And here is the disaster management services page. Once you click on the disaster management services page, then uh, our entire dashboard of uh, the disaster management services page opens. Now we have got various uh, uh, services under various catalogs. For example, floods, cyclones, landslides, earthquake, forest fire, drought, etc. are uh, provided using this uh, service. So if you click on near real-time flood mapping and monitoring, you would basically see uh, a web page which looks like this and all the major uh, uh, any major uh, floods which are reported at a particular place will immediately be shown to you for example in karnataka recently some floods have been reported and these can be seen here so uh, near the siddhapur area and uh, in, in this particular patch if you see in Uttar, north karnataka you will be able to see the kind of uh, floods which are uh, mapped. And you also have information for other states wherein floods have been observed. For example, Assam, if you see here, so in Upper Assam and Lower Assam, the floods were uh, seen during the month of July and it has it has been populated since uh, uh, May. So 18th May onwards, whatever floods have been reported have been mapped. So this kind of information is uh, available to you in uh, near real time. And uh, as far as the uh, low-lying area that I was talking about, so vulnerable pockets in particular cities are also mapped together. So for Chennai, these are the vulnerable pockets. All the very dark pixel that you see is basically the permanent water bodies uh, and the pink pixels that you see are low-lying areas. And uh, for various uh, different, different disasters, these kind of information are available under this particular tab. Thereafter, if you see for flood, um, Early warning. So for flood early warning also we have got uh, uh, the early warning developed for Tapi and Godavari. Uh, Tapi uh, uh, and uh, Godavari are also covered under National Hydrology Project. So uh, those of you who are basically from this part of the country would know that uh, it has been raining consistently for last uh, three, four days in the southern part of the country. And we have been observing a lot of uh, inflow into the river. So uh, as far as uh, uh, this particular place is concerned, you would see that um, for Bhadra Chalam, if I show you, we have done some assessment and we are in a position to tell you well in advance on 15th of July, what will be the uh, overall discharge in the river at this location. So you see that 
it is reaching peak somewhere on 14th evening that is today in the evening it will be uh, reaching the peak and thereafter uh, it will go on receding so these kind of hydrographs for various stations are available to you uh, also the flood simulation what will be the pattern of flooding can also be seen from this particular uh, uh, application so if you see here you click on uh, this uh, flood simulation map and then you zoom in here you'll be able to see the pattern of flooding uh, that would come so uh, if you see clearly you will be able to assess the overall uh, information some of you may be seeing some kind of uh, uh, delay so I'm, I'm doing it slowly so all these information are basically provided to you so, uh, well in advance this helps the uh, state government and the uh, nodal agencies in planning the overall relief rescue operations this also tells you the overall pattern of flooding that will be developed uh, six hours from now 12 hours from now and all and uh, this has been very well calibrated uh, and very well uh, uh, validated also using satellite based observations thereafter if you look at flood vulnerability index i am only taking through a uh, through a very uh, 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 brief uh, this thing if you want to see uh, further details you'll be i would ask you to look at all these small small uh, tabs here every tab has got a lot of information uh, available to you so spatial runoff probable maximum precipitation that is there in the country would also be seen to you too so if you click here on one particular point you will be able to see with respect to the legend the probable maximum precipitation is 300 mm or more in last 100 years using last 100 year information uh, as far as the flood hazard is concerned you would uh, we have prepared flood hazard request for the state of assam bihar and odisha so if you go to assam you will be able to see the overall uh, uh, hazard layer for assam which areas are uh, and categorized in very high category in high category moderate category so this basically tells you overall impact with respect to but the uh, entire state if you want to have information with respect to a particular district you can do the same also go to that uh, click on that district barapeta for example barapeta for example and uh, you will get these kind of information suppose if you want to do some assessment on your own then we give you the functionality uh, using the statistics tool also. This is overall statistics for the uh, entire state. And uh, if you want to do some uh, of your own assessment, then you can go to analysis, draw AOI, create a small polygon of AOI and see in this particular area, how much area comes in uh, what kind of category. So it will basically generate a statistics also for you and you will be able to print it as a report as well. So, uh, under uh, floods and cyclones, these services are uh, readily available to all the uh, concerned uh, agencies and departments. Um, as far as the cyclones are concerned, uh, in, uh, under the category of cyclone, you, you can uh, navigate through this thing also. Uh, for cyclone YAS, for example, if you see, you simply have to click here and then you would be able to see the overall track of the cyclone well inland uh, into the uh, place. So this is updated on a real-time basis, Torte, for example, which struck the Gujarat coast. You would be able to see the impact zones also, high impact and moderate impact zones, and then lower impact zones. So a lot of uh, uh, damage was caused to the Diu area and Amreli uh, when it struck the Gujarat coast at that time. And uh, rains were even seen till Banaskanta in Rajasthan. So likewise, uh, for other services, you have the landslide inventory and landslide early warning inventory also, which is being updated. You have the forest fire inventory also that I'll show you. It is real-time uh, information itself, which is being given to all the concerned agencies. So if you see here, the date is uh, 14th of July, which is today, and the pass is 10-25 uh, hours. If you look here, forest fire was observed using modest data at this location. So you have a geotag location also, and immediately this information is passed using SMS and uh, other alerts to the forest fire departments so that they can send their own people uh, to uh, see that uh, it is immediately doused uh, using whatever mechanism they have. And if you want to have information, you can click here, and this information uh, will be downloaded uh, in form of uh, 
CSV file or an Excel file or whatever way you want. So it will have information of the latitude longitude. The sensor which was used uh, to identify the forest fire and uh, that information uh, was observed at what time can also be made uh, available to you. So uh, if you see here, uh, all these services are available under uh, the disaster management catalog uh, of uh, uh, floods. So now I would want to take some uh, questions from people. I would want you to kindly go through this entire thing. It is a very, very enriched platform. Uh, as far as the disaster management is concerned, no other country has this kind of spatial information, which is real time uh, available, integrated together at one place. So uh, I would want most of you to kindly go through the portal once, just uh, have a glance at it. If you want any particular service to be added or uh, appended or uh, some additional information that you want, kindly get back to us. We will uh, ensure that we look into it and we provide you all the services which we can to the best of our abilities. Yeah, thank you, Avinav, uh, for your talk and also the demo on the disaster services of Buon Geo Portal. Uh, I think I have two questions uh, I can pick up from the chat. Uh, this is related to the landslides. Uh, so if you can answer this question, like uh, what are the para early warning parameters for uh, landslides? Are you aware of this one? I uh, see landslide is basically uh, uh, there is a, a complete entity geosciences group which is looking into it. But I can tell you some of the uh, aspect uh, for detailed information. I believe you should uh, reach uh, uh, geosciences group and they would be able to tell you. So you need to have information about the precipitation, the lithology of that area. You also need to have uh, information about the accidental moisture condition. Uh, thereafter, the soil type that you have. Uh, and the fault uh, uh, details, uh, whether uh, any fault lines are already available, present there. Uh, so these, these are some of the in, uh, inputs that may be uh, a part of it and uh, is, are usually available and using these itself, one landslide early warning system has also been developed. So uh, thereafter some segmentation analysis are also run over it. and. Uh, the areas which may be impacted uh, due to uh, heavy rainfall or other things may be vulnerable to landslide are basically that. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, probably uh, the participant can uh, put a mail to Bowen or uh, training at the rate nrsc.gov.in if you are uh, interested to know like what are the models and what are the parameters, what inputs uh, we use to model that. Uh, vulnerable areas or uh, do some uh, analysis. So probably you can write to us. Uh, probably we can take that uh, query to the respective uh, domain expert. So next question, uh, like can we monitor, uh, reverse and assess the amount of sand mine? I mean, are we doing any such uh, activities? Yeah, actually, uh, I, I, yes, yes. The, uh, these kind of uh, uh, requests have come to us in the past, recent past. Uh, we, what we have done is, uh, we have gone through it. It requires a very a dynamic temporal information. So, uh, in order to assess the sand mining that is happening on the banks, you may be in a position to do it using the multi temporal data means today's information and tomorrow's information. But if you look at the satellite images, it is basically 2D information that is passed on. And sand mining is basically a volumetric assessment that you need to do. So, Ideally speaking, what you would require is basically prepare an elevation model, uh, a three-dimensional uh, uh, map of one particular area where whichever is your point of concern. And then it should be a pre-data and then thereafter you need to go and assess a post-data uh, assessment also. So it would require preparing digital elevation model on a very high frequency. And which is usually not feasible because these kind of studies are done pan India once in every two, three, three, four years. Uh, so if uh, if you want to do this kind of assessment, uh, my suggestion would be to go ahead with drones. Uh, drone based uh, uh, elevation models can be created on the fly. They can be uh, done uh, on user demand. And thereafter, once you have uh, uh, elevation profile of a particular area in the pre-image, pre and you have an elevation profile 
with respect to the post image, you can do the differencing and you can see how much excavation has been done, how much volume is missing. But this is possible only for the area which is exposed, it means on the banks. Uh, if uh, dredging, if some kind of dredging is done, if some uh, sand mining is done from the river channel itself, you will not be able to assess it. Okay, Abhinav, uh, thank you uh, Somebody? for your uh, patient answering. Yeah, this is Harish here again, Abhinav. So that is uh, yes, the yes, question yes. Uh, uh, that uh, I'll take for the, your talk. Uh, one more question is there that is on the uh, changes in the landscape. Probably our next speaker will uh, will be able to answer that one uh, in that uh, Bowen Geo portal. Uh, so Abhinav Kumar, uh, thank you very much for your valuable talk. And your uh, and, and those and of you who are having any doubts or questions, can uh, come back to me, yes. Yeah, definitely. Any further queries, so we'll try to share it to your email. Probably you can respond directly to the participants. So thank you very much, Abhinav. Uh, so with that, we'll uh, end the session on the uh, disaster management support through Bruin Geo Portal. And uh, this is just uh, uh, information to all the participants uh, that uh, you have been mentioning, like you are not able to uh, access the, I mean, submit the quiz uh, once you have answered that one. So we are looking into that uh, issue of uh, why it is uh, happening. So we are, we are, we are sort of trying, we are working on it to see that uh, these quiz sessions will be made available uh, till tomorrow, that is July 15. So you have, uh, I mean, good amount of time available with you to answer the uh, quiz for the three days, and then you can also submit that. Oh. So we are, we are enabling that links uh, for all these th three days till uh, uh, July 15, so that you have uh, a time to answer that one. Uh, but I want to remind you, like, uh, you, if you are attempting, attempting and not submitting it, uh, then uh, that, uh, again, needs to be redone. So once you attempt it and then sub submit it, uh, that quiz will be registered. So please ensure that uh, you're not only ticking the correct answers, but at the end of each quiz, you're also doing the submission. Yeah. So this uh, submission is for one time. That means for each uh, account, uh, once you submit it, uh, that will be the end of that particular quiz. So you need to move on to the quiz two and then the quiz three. Uh, so that is uh, the information as far as the quiz is concerned. And yes, the PPT is also, we, we will upload it uh, uh, very soon uh, into that uh, uh, LMS platform. So you, once you have, uh, once we have uploaded it, uh, you'll get a message so that you can access the uh, presentations that were covered during the uh, webinar. Uh, so we are uh, actually uh, collating all the uh, presentations uh, uh, of the three days uh, session. So uh, give us some time uh, before we uh, put, before we upload them in the, uh, uh, the uh, LMS platform. And uh, next we'll uh, start our uh, session on the uh, tutorials. So this is again related to the Bhuvan features and usage. So this will be our uh, uh, penultimate uh, session uh, for this uh, webinar uh, before uh, we start our uh, uh, feedback and closeout session. So it is my uh, sincere request to all the uh, participants to uh, kindly stay put uh, with this session. And also uh, for the closeout session where and, uh, we also look forward for your valuable feedback. Uh, so kindly, uh, you can uh, rate rate this webinar session uh, through the live chat. Uh, give us your valuable feedback, and some of the uh, important feedbacks will be taken up for uh, the discussion in the closeout session also. So do join us uh, for the closeout uh, session at the end of this particular tutorials, and uh, uh, kindly give your valuable feedback. Uh, now uh, Shubham Das is there. Uh, he will uh, take us through the Bhuvan features and usage. Uh, uh, Shubham, uh, are you able to hear us? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, Shubham, it's over to you for your uh, tutorials. Okay. So good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I uh, Shubham Das from Bhuvan Web Services Development Division will be demonstrating the Bhuvan Geo Portal. So, I will proceed with the session. So, this is our landing page. Basically, when we type bhuvan.nrc.gov.in here. No, Shubham, I think you have not yet shared your uh, screen. Okay, okay. Enhance visible. Yeah, it is fine now. Go ahead. Okay. So this is our uh, landing page. This is the home page. When we type uh, 
www.sc.gov.in. So this is the landing page. So we can uh, from here we can go navigate to our old website also. So this is uh, our old website which look like this, and from here we can go back to the new page also. So this is the current home page we have. So here uh, first I will discuss the links given in the nav bar. So this is the one home which will bring to this web page. So from here we can go to the National Remote Sensing Center homepage. Here we have some other links. So next link is the application sector, which uh, redirects to the application sector applications which are present here. That I will uh, go further. So next is the Bhuvan collaborators. So in Bhuvan collaborators, whatever the ministry applications that are collaborating with us is listed here. Suppose uh, this is the Punjab Health and Tourism Promotion Board. So uh, this is a basic uh, gist which is given here, and from here we can visit the portal also. So this is the uh, Amritsar Tourism yeah. Portal. So next is the Punjab Remote Sensing Center. These are the details given, and from here also we we can visit the portal. Similarly, all other applications are given here, and the portal links are also attached at the end. Next up. Uh, we can go to the Bhuvan store. So Bhuvan store is basically whatever the data that is available in the Bhuvan. So the date, when a date of the availability, what is the frequency, and what is the coverage and file size download, all are you can get in the list here. We can go back to the home from here. Next is the newsletter. Here in the newsletter, we give regular updates, whatever we are uh, publishing. Whatever new we are doing, we give the newsletter. Suppose uh, the latest newsletter is this one. If you visit this, so here it is telling is the National Hydrology Project Flux Dashboard. Recently, we have um, we have uh, published a flux dashboard which uses open ed covariance flux tower uh, data and gives the basic details about the temperature, wind speed, net radiation, and we have uh, currently ten flux towers across India and. Uh, those towers are disseminating data to our database and it is being displayed here. So this is the NSP portal. From here, we can go to that evapotranspiration. And this is the flux dashboard, which we have recently launched. So from here, if we click any tower, suppose I click Harvard. So Harvard will get the details of the, uh, whether details basically what the tower is disseminating to us. So similarly, all the 10 towers data we can get here. So next is the Bhuvan Wiki. So in Bhuvan, Bhuvan Wiki is the basically a search portal, uh, Wikipedia kind of thing for particularly for Bhuvan. Here you can search anything, whatever, and get the information from, from here. So next, I will go, go to the banner. So here all the latest applications, what, what are launched, you can get here. Suppose this is a Bhuvan uh, COVID-19 vaccination centers, which were launched uh, last year for the vaccination centers. Next, uh, Bhuvan supportive applications for the COVID-19. For uh, a pandemic, a lot of applications have been launched in the Bhuvan, and everything is being listed here, like COVID-19 dashboard, citizen entry reporting officer, mobile right was a tracking, which uh, the last speaker has talked about, and all other things. Recently, we have launched a Bhuvan Adar Seva Kendra. So, in Adar Seva Kendra, we have listed down all the other Seva Kendras here. So there are four categories like blue is the all environment center and update. Like this one is the only demographic and mobile update. Uh, red one is the only child enrollment and mobile update. And last is only child enrollment. So here if we search any city like Hyderabad and searching. So if I go to here, so yeah. I will be zoomed to that location and within that proximity, what are the uh, so other enrollment centers are available, I can get. And if, if I click on this, I can get the details also. And we can navigate to that location also. So, next I will come to here. This is the visualization and free data download. So, here we have uh, these five categories the Bowen 2D, Bowen 3D, Bowen Light, Open Data Archive, and Climatic Environment. I will go to Bowen 2D first. So, once I go to Bowen 2D, so this is the landing page of the Bhuvan 2D. Here I'm in whole India map will come. Using this zoom levels, we can zoom to whatever location we need. If we enter the enter any lap down here. Okay. 
So like this, I will be directed to that location. So here I will uh, demonstrate some tools. So first tool, what I will demonstrate is a draw tool. So draw tool is basically you can draw some things on the map. Like suppose I can draw polygon on the map using this. I draw and I save it. So here the feature is being saved and we can download the feature as a shape file. If I click this download option, right? So I will have to uh, enter two attributes like an attribute one and attribute two if I give a text and a message what it is like we can give it is something like school if I give. And if I create it, it will create the shape file. And once we click on the download button, it will download the shape file in the zip format. If you open this zip, you can see. We can see the shape file has been uh, downloaded. So you, you you can use the shape file for other purpose in any uh, any uh, GIS uh, software like QGIS or ArcGIS. So this is the uh, draw tool basically. Next is next like measure area. We can uh, measure distance like this. This we'll get the area here. Like total area is this much. So it, using this tool, we can measure area of anything on the map, and we have a measure distance also, measure length. Suppose I want to measure distance from this to what is the distance? I will get the distance. I will get the distance like this is the this much kilometers. It's proximity. So proximity is basically if we enter a lat norm, suppose I click here, this lat norm gets automatically entered here. And we can select a category like residential, transportation, financial service, health, wellness, shopping, locality, commercial and industrial religious places, entertainment, community services, and hotels and restaurants. And if you select all, so all will be considered for the proximity. Suppose I want to select for com commercial and industrial, and I have to enter a buffer. And this buffer is in kilometers. So if I enter 50, in 50 kilometers. So if once I submit, what it will do is uh, taking this lat norm as the center, it will, it will create a 50 kilometer radius buffer and it will list down all the commercial and industrial details that are here. So like this, you can see. If I change the category, suppose I make it to entertainment and again submit, I will get the entertainment centers. I can increase the buffer also. So within this buffer, we can get the details like this. Next, I will go to the navigation. So navigation is basically uh, if I give an address start point, because I give a start point, I want from here. And I want to go to there are two options here and have, we can give a wire points also if I want to go via some location. So there are two options here by time by distance. If I select by time, so by time I will get a route like this. So this is the complete list of route by time. And if I select by distance, so it will select, it will optimize for distance. So this is the by distance. And I want to go via some place. Suppose I enter Kudnul, Andhra Pradesh. So I, I will get a route via Kudnul. See, this route is different. Previously, we got a route from this. So via Kudnul, I am getting a route. Here also, we can get by time or by distance. And we'll get, uh, get the navigation for our navigation, how to, from where to go, like this, as a list. So this is with the navi uh, navigation. Here we can add photos. 
for adding photos, we need to have a login. So we need to have a login in Ruben single sign on. So if you are a new user, once if you select in the new user, you have to enter your details here. After entering the details, you have to give your username, your email ID, your country, telephone number, what occupation you are doing, what is the details, your profile, everything, and what is the purpose, and you give some. Once you submit, you will get a link in your email for uh, activating the email ID. So using clicking that link, you will get a. You have to generate a password. You have to activate your email ID, and then you can click here to log in. And you, if you enter your username, you can log into this portal. Of course, now I will log in. See, logging successful. I'm logging to. I'm logging to this portal now. So once I click add photo, once I click add photos, so I can add information to the Google portal. Like I can give lat, lat latitude, longitude. What is my user username will be by default coming by what username you're logging. What category you're uploading? I Means suppose I want to geotag one ATM. So I have uh, discovered one ATM which is not listed in Google portal. Means when I'm searching using the proximity, I'm not getting that ATM. So I want to list it here. So, so I can select ATM. I can give the subject remarks and I can choose an image and submit. And after verification, that point of interest data will come in this portal. So using the pro proximity, you can visualize it here. Similarly, you can add panorama. So panorama also same thing, latitude, longitude, you have to give, you have to select the category and sum. You have to choose the image and then click on sum. WMS manager. WMS manager is basically web map service. If you have any URL, you have any WMS URL. So you have to paste the WMS URL here and load layer, it will load the layer here. So this is all about the Bowen 2D and the Bowen uh, whatever the tools here. And next is you can go to the satellite. Once you go to the satellite image for a particular area. You can get historical data. Like if I click here, I get historical data like 2015, 2013, 2015 data, and 1961, 1980. And you can uh, this is this Bhuvan. This basically adds the road layer upon the map, you can toggle it. Since you add the road layer or remove, Survey of India also has a... Using this also, using the cities and towns, you can get all the important cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Ahmednagar, Aurangabad, Nasik, and even toggle like this also. Next, we'll go to Bhuvan 3D. So Bhuvan 3D is the 3D visualization of the same Bhuvan. Here also we have some 3D models, like from here if we go to Karnataka, here we can get some of the 3D models. 
this is the front temple there is three rotating This you can visualize the this hospital. The hospital steady model you can visualize like this. Similarly, all other cities there are like Nagpur, Maharashtra, Hyderabad, Telangana, there are the Uttarakhand. We go to there are Go to Indian Bureau of Mines. Here also tools are there, similar tools, draw tool, measure area, measure distance, and uh, add content. When we can, you can add content, uh, the similar thing, how you can add point of interest data in the moment to be. Next, we will see uh, open data archive. So in open data archive, we are giving some data which are free for download here. So we give uh, for downloading. So already logged. We'll log in. So first time uh, I've logged in, then now uh, I have to select a category like satellite center, theme or product, or in program or project. Like if I select a satellite center, so in the subcategory we have to select a sensor. Suppose I'm selecting Cartosat 1. So what is the product? Cartodem all versions, Cartodem version 1, Cartodem version 1 R1, Cartodem version 2 R1, and Cartodem version 3 R1. So I'm selecting Cartodem version 1. So here I can uh, select using bounding box, map sheet of number of uh, which particular grid I require the data to be downloaded, or I can select tile wise or interactive drawing we can do. So I will be selecting tile wise. So once you select the tile, you have to click on start. So after click on, clicking on start, you have to select the tiles like this. So, or you can drag also for selecting multiple tiles. Either you select a single tile like this, or you drag to select multiple tiles. Suppose I want this tile data, so I'm selecting this tile, and I will stop. Once I stop, then I can go, I will have to click on next. So as I click on next, whatever the data is available for that tile, I will get, a, uh, get here. So this is the metadata, metadata of the data, what is being down, getting downloaded. View the data which tile I have selected and click on download to get the data. So you can see here once the file is downloaded. Once I there will be a TIF image, so GOTF image, which will give the data of that particular selected tile. We can click on new selection for new selection, or here I can uh, I will select a different sensor like this or that. So here also same way we can give a bounding box, map sheet, we know the topo sheet number, tiles, and interactive drawing. So we'll do it different. See, I've selected these, these many tiles. So I have to stop for confirming. Then I have to click on next. Once I click next, the list of the data for all those styles we have selected will be visualized here. Here also, you can get the metadata. 
You can click on view to view the data here. Whatever tiles you are selecting, you view and you can download similar in a similar fashion. So this was all about the open data archive. So next is the climate and environment. So in climate and environment, we are uh, going to the here nicest brochure you can get here. This is the nicest brochure. What are the products they have? What are the products they have in pipeline and all, all the details are listed here. And this is the nicest booklet. You can get the nicest booklet. What are their objectives? What is the portal? What products they have? Next, we'll go to the application sectors. So application sectors are being subdivided as like e-governance, tourism, urban, rural, agriculture, water, forestry. So e-governance, we have all the applications related to ministries, which are for e-governance. Yeah. We have a decentralized planning. We will proceed to the next person, the tourism. Tourism, if we see, we have archaeology and tourism GIs. I will go to archaeology first. So in archaeology, suppose I am choosing Assam. So you can choose the circle, Guwahati circle, district. And whatever the monument is there. So here only one monument, like Temple of Vishnu. This is the Temple of Vishnu. So here is the legend given here, red, yellow and green. Red is the protected area, yellow is the prohibited area and green, green is the regulated boundary. So using this you can uh, get the protected area, prohibited boundary and regulated boundary for the for a selected monument. I will select a different state now, I will select Telangana, Hyderabad circle. Here, Charm, Charminar, you can go. See, this is the Charmina. This is the regulated boundary, sorry, protected boundary, prohibited boundary, and these are the regulated boundary. And go for that. Here, you also public. So, in tourism, another thing we have is tourism GIS. Tourism GIS, we have. You can select a city like So here we have a list of the tourist places what we have like I can get directions to that place from this to the destination I can get a route or I can search nearby anything is there or not like proximity if I search bank and ATM there is no bank ATM ah, okay. Yuko Bank, like list of banks and ATMs has listed here. Okay, click, I will get directions to that. So you can click on top destination to get the top destination points of the place, like golden temple. See, visualize golden temple here. This must be Gurdwara. Next is the urban. Urban, we have municipal GIS, urban growth, urban information system. So this is the urban land use land cover. So this select a particular state allowing once we click on the view we can get the urban land use land cover map so this is the urban land use land cover map and this is the legend we can get here from here we can get the metadata 
web service this in this web service is web map tile service and web map service using these web services you can fetch this layer in uh, any gis application you want like yes and using this you can overlay uh, Like agriculture, we have pest surveillance, RKBY plantation, pest surveillance. We can choose any state here and get a district. Choose crop. Yes. Like you get the details and one click here and we go and get up. Next, we have maps and OGC services. In maps and OGC services, we have thematic services, ocean services, disaster management, and create a map. So we will see thematic services. In thematic services, you can select a theme, theme here from the top down. You can select land use and over 50 day. We'll select a state, Kerala, we view. We'll get the land use land cover map 50k for Kerala and the legend is shown here. Similarly, statistics we can get statewide statistics. Or if we select, we can get a district by statistics. Once we select the district, we select the district by statistics. Analysis we can do. We can draw AOI. Any area of interest we can do and click on analyze. We have to draw a small area. Once we click on the area of interest, once we Click on analyze the area of interest which we have drawn. It will zoom to that location, and the statistics will be shown in the panel. The metadata of the land use land cover data. Similarly, here also we are providing this web map tile service and web map service for fetching the data in for use any use in GIS applications. So here some other themes are also there. We can get wasteland. And data also. So the wasteland. Still so is the wasteland and for data for the chart. We can zoom to a district level. Here, all the legends are coming in the left side. Here also, we can get the statistics. Already district uh, zoom to the district. So district by statistic is showing. We can toggle to get the state by statistics also. Same analysis we can do here also. And once we click on analyze, it will zoom to that AOI and whatever indicated forest is square kilometers and scrubland. Only two categories we are finding here. Do analysis on this area. One more thing is land use land cover data. Land use land cover data to 50k. We can get for uh, all the things are similar like statistics, metadata, web service. So here we can uh, get this data also. So what is we are for get or we can get data for only land use land cover to 50k. So for getting land use land cover to 50k for if anybody wants to use for uh, their project or some other things, so they can uh, select here as land use land cover to 50k. So what is basically they will go to thematic services. So they will select the theme as land use land cover to 50k and select a year from here and select a season. We have three seasons, Kari, Rabi and 
Canva. So I select a run I and I will view the data. So we can zoom to state here. Once we zoom to the state, once we zoom to the state, we can get the data, like if we click on get data. So here we can uh, submit the request after select, selecting is selecting all the things we have to submit a request. Once this request is submitted, it will be processed internally and the data will be provided to the requester. This way user can get uh, land use land cover data for 50k from us. Other things are not provided for a uh, couple of things. Next is yeah, Shubham, Shubham Harish here. Hello. Yes, yeah, sir, Shubham, yeah. Uh, yeah. can we also uh, visualize the changes in land use land cover with whatever uh, years of data we have? Is it possible to visualize the changes in the LULC of whatever the years we have uploaded the data? Okay, means uh, year comparison changes, sir? Yes. No, currently that is not uh, enabled here. Means suppose you are telling I uh, select a category like Assam. You are telling land is land for 250k, sir? Yeah. Okay. And suppose I select no, we, a year and... Uh, okay. Like suppose any no, sir, year or within a, a given year, mm -hmm. can we visualize the changes in land use land cover? So there's a question related to this in the chat. Uh, it asks okay. whether we can uh, do that uh, changes and identify the changes or we can run an animation showing like what were the changes over a given period of time. So is it possible to visualize the data in uh, that mode, animation mode? Uh, no, sir. Currently, the data is in the, the static mode only for every. We have to select a particular year and the selector season. We can visualize it. But what we, you are telling thing is like uh, year wise, if we can get an animation or not, that is not correct. Okay. And one more question is like uh, how we download the data and use the data in QGIS. So you will be showing that one also, also no? how to consume the thematic services in QGIS. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. These are the two questions that I picked up. On. Yeah, sure. You can go ahead. So next is the ocean services. This is basically for getting the potential fishing zones. This data is for given as the coastal area, and this data we are getting from inquiries here. Uh, so here, if I select a sector from here, I'm selecting a sector like Orissa. So. All the um, postal get the nearest whatever post is there and all the potential fishing zones I can get. Okay. These are the potential fishing zones like Potential picking uh, the fish images are potential fishing zones, and the yellow line represents the potential fishing lines. So, using this information, we can get to know where we can. Uh, it's basically potential for uh, getting more amount of fish. So, using this information, you can get to know. So, disaster management services, anyway, the previous speaker has already explained, so I will not uh, get more into it. So, next we have a Bhuvan central application. So here what we have is all the list of central ministries applications, any special application, G governance dashboard and all the state applications listed in one particular uh, location. Like if we click on central ministry,
special applications is basically like data discovery, image gallery, we have international disaster, multilingual translation, OSCAT 3D, Go and Suvida, online shapefile creation, decision support system, smart tracking, hydrological product, atmospheric lighting product, and Go and Wiki. This is the image gallery we are providing here. These are the recently uploaded image of this is some part of Patran Punjab. Like this is district jail. Mr. Pradesh, if you click on the image, it will can all go on portal like this. So which image it is. So we have the list of cities also we can get. Like Chennai, Kochi, Pune. Airports we have. This is Ahmedabad Airport. This is Aurangabad Airport. Coimbatore International Airport. And Pune International Airport. This is about the image uh, gallery what we have. Like international disaster, if we go, you can choose a particular country, like if we go to Bangladesh. We can view. Disaster, what has happened, and get the image for download as a UDF. Multilingual translation, we can translate to any language. Like this. In RSC, this like search is this. So this is the multilingual translation. And then you can get for other languages also. So this is a Bhuvan mapper tool. Here we can uh, create shape file. Like if I want to create a point, line, an area. Clear, uh, suppose I click on area, I can draw shape file, and I can give the list what it is. Like if I give a path, I have to. I can give a name. <laughs> Say this has been saved. Like all this, all the shape files have been previously drawn here. Yeah. Click on, we can edit also. If we edit something, add something, we can change the category feature type. Also, and again, click on save. Really? Save here. So, user can uh, download also. Select the date, what they have. Uh, So whatever shape files I have drawn, whatever shape files or lines uh, I have drawn within these day, it will be downloaded and it, it can be added in any GIS application. One.
So next is the decision support dashboard. Will be track Smart tracking is basically an app which uh, which allows its mobile based Android app for vehicle tracking. So using this um, smart tracking, any uh, particular organization can track whatever the like logistic tracking they can do and they can track all the logistic information what they have for their organization. So this is the lightning ECV. So here date wise uh, lightning information is all the whole India is being divided into grids. See we can like date wise you can see whatever the lightning falls has given you this can change the date. So the color co color coding is also given here. Like if uh, one two three one two five strikes are there, then it's uh, dark blue, and uh, heavy is uh, greater than five hundred, which is red. And if we click, if we click on the grid, like it will show. Uh, you can download it in the moderate. It's like 29. You can download whatever the. You can download the grid. GUT also. Shape. We are getting that particular uh, grid as a shape file. This is this is all about the lightning. ECB what we have in our Google portal. So, logical product, so hydrological product. Uh, this is the, all the hydrological product, this technical documents we can get. What are the details we can get from here? Whatever is there here, you can explore and get. So, next we'll go with the state wise application. So, in state wise application, uh, if once we click on the state, all the applications that are listed here. Uh, Currently under that state can be visualized like Rajasthan, we have this Madhya Pradesh, uh, Maharashtra. Maharashtra, we have Maharashtra state application and WRDS. Like if we go to WRDS, like water resource management support for the Maharashtra. So here all the water body details are based on the district, what is the reservoir, what tank. All the details you can get here. So this how you can you can uh, Go from here also, whatever the, this Uttarakhand forest, Uttarakhand state application, this is Uttarakhand forest application. So, all the state applications which we are doing, which are being uh, given under the uh, one portal, all are listed here. You can see. So, through this, you can uh, redirect to any state application uh, directly. So, this is all about our. Uh, 
Google portal, whatever is there. So now I will demonstrate uh, you how to add the layers in Q, how to add a shape file layer in QGIS, or how to consume our web map service in QGIS. Sir, kindly give me uh, two minutes. I will do the setup and come back. Excuse me, sir. Harish, am I audible? Yeah, yes, you are. You are audible player. Kindly go ahead. Uh, okay, okay, sir. Yes, So now I will demonstrate to you how to add the layer. Shibam, you are there. Uh, you are trying to share your screen. Hello. Shubham will join us very shortly. No, he's setting up the uh, another system for you to show how to consume the one uh, thematic services in QGIS. So be online. Uh, he will join us uh, shortly in. Um, Sorry for the delay. Am I audible? Yeah, you are Shubham. Go ahead. Am I audible, sir? Yes, you are. Kindly share your screen and you can go ahead. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. So like uh, previously I was discussing, if we draw, again I will draw a polygon and show you. We'll draw a polygon here. So I can save the feature as like this. We'll give a name. Create and download. So this gets downloaded here. So if we extract here, so we get the shape file here. So we can add the layer as like this add layer and go to vector layer. Can go to the shape file what we have downloaded, it is in the download folder. 
shape file like shape file if you select if you add the shape file is being added and the attributes also you can visual, visualize to this like what we have added test this is a school this is the attribute name and this is the value we have entered so next uh, someone wants to know about the wms so then i will i will relate to our thematic services what we have so here will i will select a theme like land use land code 50k 20, uh, 2005 and 2006 i'll select a state and i will view like this and i will consume this web map i will copy this url and here we have an option in layer in layer we have add layer and the there is an option called add uh, add WMS or WMTS layer or the shortcut is control shift W in QGIS. So once we click here, we have to click on new. So this is a new link. So I have to paste the URL here. So URL I have pasted here. I will give a name. It is uh, LULC suppose LULC and I will click on okay. LULC is already there. I will give LULC new and click on OK. Then I have to click on connect. So connect what it does is it will connect to that uh, URL, whatever the layers are there and it will fetch. Okay. okay. From there, see all the things, all the layers have come and we have to get the layer. Like, uh, see, this is awesome. So it will be LULC colon awesome LULC 50K this. So we'll search this layer. Layer and we'll copy this layer. So I have got the layer. Okay. So you select the layer and click simply click on add. So we can see layer has been added. Like if I zoom to the layer, you can see the layer has been added in your QGIS map. So this way you can consume our WMTS service what we are providing. So this is for Assam. Similarly, we can add for other state also. If I uh, select like Gujarat, so Gujarat, I'm getting the layer. Same thing, we'll go to the web services. Uh, this URL is anyway added. I will search for Gujarat LULC now. So layer name I'm searching. Again, I have to go to layer, add layer. Then add a WMS WMTS layer. I have to search this layer. So this is the Gujarat. I will click on this. I will simply click on add. Okay. Some invalid layer error is coming. I have to check. I click this add. It's taking time. Okay. So if I zoom to the layer, you can see Gujarat layer is being added. So uh, whoever is, was asking the question, am I able to answer it? Yeah, Shubham, uh, you are telling something. I... Uh, actually, sir, means uh, am I able to means uh, someone was asking how to consume the WMS service what we are providing. So I'm asking, am I able to demonstrate properly? Means is it sufficient for Achoo. or some other information is needed? Yeah. No, this is fine. Like uh, this one layer you have downloaded and uh, you have shown it how to access it in the QGIS. True? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. This was the, okay, this was this, the question, uh, you, right? Sir? Yeah, like how to, I mean, use uh, this data in QGIS one thing, like, but how to get that URL? Uh, uh, from the one that you have shown. Oh, okay, okay. I will again. I will demonstrate. No issue. So uh, first, this is uh, we will go to the Bhuvan landing page. So landing page, we have to go to thematic services in maps and OGC services, which is the third category of here. So after click on thematic services, this is the landing page of the thematic services. So here there are uh, many listed themes. What do you require? The land use land cover. 50k, three uh, three different years are there. 250k is there. 10k is there. Land degradation, wasteland, anything is there. Suppose I am selecting land use, land cover 50k, 11 and 12. So once I select land use, land cover uh, 50k, 11 and 12, I have to select a state. 
once i select a state i'm selecting karnataka and i will click on view so this karnataka land use land cover map will come along with the legend you can see you can see here so i have to directly go for consumption i have to directly go to web services so web services here we are providing web map tile service url and web map service url so we will use web map tile service url because it is cached so it will be faster so we will use this urls okay i will again show this url you have to add here see once you go to layer add layer add wms wmts layer so here you have to create a new so here you have to paste the url you have to give a name what this name is whatever you want to give your as per your choice then you have to connect suppose that i llc new already have added so i will click on connect one once i click on connect all the layers that are available will be listed down here so what you have to do is since this is karnataka see here layer name we are giving here by zoom in there is it visible a layer layer llc colon ka underscore llc 50k underscore 11 12 so this lay, this is the basically llc of karnataka 50k or uh, 2011 2012 so we have to search the layer here here is a search box so if you search here you will get the list you have to add it you have to select the layer you have to click on add it is it has added so if you uh, right click and zoom to the layer you will be zoomed to that karnataka layer is it fine sir and like whatever the attribute information that uh, comes with the this the lulc map that on, that also can be displayed no yes sir yes sir. that you can get the legend here like this okay. see like this that is the built up urban this built up mining agriculture cropland all the whatever the legend is there it also gets downloaded along with it okay, but suppose if they want to see the statistics uh, how they want to how they can visualize uh, statistics sir you have to visualize it. here here we have statistics option so um, Here we are providing state-wise statistics and district-wise statistics. So in the stat state-wise statistics, there is a pie chart of uh, in, in the pie chart. Their percentage of area is given. Here is the uh, total geographical area of that particular state. What is the percentage? What it is having for each classes? Like since this uh, dark pink, we can and basically barren. and uncultivated wastelands so here uh, the area is given in square kilometers and you can get district by statistics also once you click on district by statistics you have to select a district so the list of districts will come here you select suppose i select tumkur so for tumkur this is the geographical area is shown here this is the pie chart with the percentages and the classes given here and this is the area in square kilometers for the tumkur district whatever llc statistics is there Am I able to answer, sir? You're fine, uh, Shubham. Okay. So can uh, go ahead further. Uh, you want to showcase uh, any more uh, applications? These uh, all these are the things from my side, sir. If any questions, you can address. So like one question is related to the bhuvan bujal uh, so okay. the user is interested to know whether the legends are provided for the bhuvan bujal maps ground water prospect maps okay okay sir sir any uh, this bhuvan bujal any portal related issue they can uh, write a mail to us i will write the mail address sir bhuvan dot 
phone at the rate nrsc dot gov dot in. They can write a mail to us, and we'll reply back to the user with the necessary details. What we can do. Okay, but the question is, like, query is like whether we are providing the legends also for the Bhuvan. What were the ground map, water map, prospects maps we are uh, providing in Bhuvan? Does mm. it have a legend telling like where the water availability is uh, good or moderate or low? Do I do we have a such kind of uh, classified legend map uh, okay. with the Bhuvan uh, Sir, uh, section? Hmm. So this thing uh, currently I'm not aware of. Uh, if user writes a mail, we will see and we'll reply back soon. Okay, sure. Then we'll we'll take it uh, take it up during the feedback session. Um, yeah, yeah. So I mean uh, that is uh, it from your side. Uh, this is what you have to share. Yes, yeah, so this uh, is uh, in your, uh, yes. Uh, that that is it from my demo? side. Demo. Okay. Uh, right then, uh, Shubham, uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, valuable demo on uh, showcasing various aspects of uh, the Bhuvan Geo Portal. Uh, so, so dear participants, uh, I mean, as was told in uh, one of the uh, talks, like uh, the Bhuvan uh, Geo Portal has a rich repository of uh, geospatial information, a lot of uh, data for visualization and download and for you to uh, consume and use it in your own uh, domain. So the best way to explore Bhuvan is to start using it. Uh, then uh, you get to know uh, what are the various uh, features in it, how it can be uh, effectively used. Uh, uh, and also to know like from your perspective, how far it can be useful. So we have put our best efforts to say that uh, it is useful for uh, all the users working in the whatever the domains that we are uh, working on. Uh, with respect to the Bhuvan Geo Portal. So our uh, effort is to see that we provide you the best possible data available. And from your perspective, you, can, you could use this uh, to solve some of the uh, uh, problems that uh, you have been working with and see how best uh, the data or whatever the tools that are provided in Bhuvan Geo Portal can be uh, used effectively to uh, get to a to search show some, some of the uh, solutions or cases. So with that uh, uh, session on uh, demonstration on uh, Bhuvan features and case studies, uh, we officially now end the uh, technical session of the Bhuvan webinar. So in a short while from now, we'll uh, just have a concluding session. It is not really a concluding session, but just a uh, 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 stock taking uh, session, I would call it. Uh, so we would like to know from the users, like how uh, how well they were able to, uh, I mean, understand uh, Bowen Geo Portal through this webinar. So we'd like to uh, hear from you. Uh, so kindly uh, give your quick feedback in the uh, live chat so that uh, I can uh, put it up to the, uh, I mean, uh, the concerned persons here and uh, like what kind of new developments or uh, uh, new features that uh, are in pipeline so that can be discussed uh, uh, during that close out session so the related to the quiz uh, i think it's already clarified now the uh, all the qu three quiz uh, sessions will be kept open till uh, tomorrow so you have time till tomorrow to attempt all those uh, quizzes and try to submit them uh, before the due time and date and uh, there was also a, a query related to like one of questions not being uh, been marked correctly so there was a question like how many tiles uh, can be downloaded from the uh, one uh, geo portal per day so the correct answer is uh, 20 but somehow it is not getting recorded as a correct answer so we are also looking into that one and uh, other issues uh, that you have mentioned in the chat box so we'll try to rectify that uh, very soon uh, and uh, ensure that the quiz uh, links are available for you to attempt and submit it. But those who have already done the submission, probably it will not be enabled again. But those who have not submitted, for them, I think they have uh, all the links available for them to complete the submission and uh, stand a chance to get the certificate. 
So I request you all to uh, kindly be online and uh, we'll start the uh, close out uh, session uh, as soon as our people join. So I've already uh, requested them to kindly join uh, this session so that we can uh, take one or two feedback from you. Anyway, you are going to give the official feedback uh, directly on the e-class platform. Uh, so only, uh, so kindly give your feedback uh, in that uh, uh, that particular uh, feedback form. And uh, for quick uh, uh, response from uh, for to your feedback to your experience in this webinar, probably you can put it in the uh, chat box. I'll uh, take it uh, to the concerned person, and we we can have a. Uh, or we can have a kind of a response or a let us say a promise uh, from our people also like what can be uh, done to improve uh, the Bhuvan Geo portal. Uh, so request all of you to kindly stay uh, there in our in this uh, uh, webinar. So we'll be quickly starting our uh, close out session. Ashok ji, hello.
Hello. Yeah, hello, our dear participants, uh, and welcome to this uh, closeout session uh, of the three day webinar on Bhuvan Overview. So I thank you uh, for uh, staying uh, in this uh, session. So this is basically to just uh, take your uh, some of your feedbacks uh, uh, during this concluding session uh, to our uh, uh, concerned uh, people. And uh, probably you can tell like what uh, you like and uh, what is uh, what we can improve in. For with the geo portal so that you will get a better experience of the uh, website. Um, so I welcome uh, to this uh, uh, close out session. Uh, uh, Dr. S. S. Rao. Uh, Group director uh, content generation and value added uh, services. Uh, uh, Dr. Harish Karnatak. Uh, he's from IIRS uh, Dehradun. Uh, Mr. Arul Raj. Uh, he's also from uh, Bhuvan geo portal and uh, web uh, services group uh, and uh, dear participants. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us uh, for this uh, session. Uh, um, I, I sincerely uh, appreciate your uh, valuable time and your uh, uh, interest in joining this webinar to get to know what are the features and uh, uh, how best you can use the geo portal for the various uh, geospatial applications. Uh, so we are here to probably take uh, some of your feedbacks and then uh, uh, put it to the uh, concerned persons and uh, uh, we will we'll try to uh, get some uh, response from them. Uh, so to start to begin with, uh, I invite uh, Mr. Arul Raj to give his uh, concluding remarks. Uh, Mr. Arul, please. Um, uh, uh, good morning all and good afternoon uh, to all the uh, participants. Uh, it's um, uh, nice uh, to see the uh, good number of uh, people who is uh, um, uh, uh, attending this program and viewing uh, this uh, uh, streaming what we are providing through uh, YouTube. And um, uh, as I have indicated in the uh, inaugural uh, session, uh, we are uh, almost like uh, more than uh, 35 times we have conducted this uh, overview training program. But this is the uh, first of its kind where we have used this uh, social media to stream it. Uh, so that way um, uh, uh, we are also trying uh, each and every time a certain kind of uh, new thing uh, to take up uh, our Bhuvan uh, to increase the uh, outreach of the Bhuvan. Yeah, that is one part of the thing. But coming to the course also, we put uh, um, uh, all the effort to improve the course content from the uh, previous session and that way your uh, feedbacks are uh, really uh, very, very important uh, to us so that we can take the feedback and we can improve our uh, session. And um, uh, all the three days, uh, whatever uh, the uh, courses we have uh, given to you, uh, it is uh, well uh, structured and it is given by the well uh, and very uh, experienced um, uh, the ISRO uh, team, uh, they have put all the efforts and provided. And we could also understand that, uh, yes, uh, the hands-on uh, uh, um, might not be the as effective as uh, when you are in the lab. But anyway, in the era of uh, this online, yes, you would have enjoyed that uh, hands-on uh, session also. Uh, but um, uh, we will certainly improve certain things with reference to the hands-on so that we can uh, bring more and more because the uh, nowadays, the comparison is, uh, uh, yes, uh, when I'm getting into the Google uh, Earth Engine, so I could uh, do my uh, coding online, or I will go to the Google and uh, I will do some kind of uh, collab uh, environment, I will use it. So towards that one, yes, uh, we are also working so that the next uh, session, you will be having more um, the online, uh, the uh, practical things within the Bhuvan framework itself. So towards that one, uh, we are also making the effort and uh, we will uh, do it and um, uh, hope you would have definitely enjoyed. And as I mentioned in the initial uh, remark, kindly uh, take this learning uh, to uh, all your uh, near and dears um, uh, and the different uh, departments or different uh, um, uh, forums. You take it and you popularize this, this one and Bhuvan is having a wide variety of data sets and applications. And by seeing this application, yes, you will have also by this time come out with some kind of application. Yes, I want to do this application. Kindly write a mail 
to buwan at nrsc.gov.in bhuvan at nrsc.gov.in you write a mail so that we will uh, take your um, inputs or the collaborative interest and we will uh, try to bring out a collaborative application uh, so um, that is the only uh, message i want to uh, reiterate um, you can be a, a volunteer for for data you can be a volunteer for a developer or uh, you can be a volunteer for uh, validating our uh, uh, content or uh, you can be a, a, a contributor for bringing out any collaborative application so whatever the mode you want to uh, collaborate you are welcome and we are uh, open for this one uh, and uh, anyway with this one i will stop and uh, over to uh, mr harish thank you yeah thank you very much arul for, for your valuable remarks uh, i now welcome and invite uh, uh, dr harish karnatak who has been who has played a very uh, vital role in supporting this uh, particular webinar uh, sir your thoughts on this webinar yeah thank you harish sir and uh, thank you arul ss rawzi and uh, dear participant and in fact uh, i was not very closely attending all the sessions but somehow uh, i have seen few uh, interesting session and uh, i request all the participant to please explore the bhuvan portal in detail because lot of data is there lot of information is there and uh, in fact arul uh, i was just uh, delivering one session on bhuvan today morning to one of the course in iirs that was on decision maker course where the very senior level officers from different government department were there and they requested me to tell something about the bhuvan so i spent around 1 hour today morning and i was just uh, demonstrating them and then they were also very excited to see the features and the developments happening in this particular platform so very nice and i request all the participant to please explore from their side because training is one component uh, in this virtual mode we can only demonstrate you uh, if you want to understand the more detail about the data products services and the maps how it is being disseminated and all so that you have to do the uh, hands on experiments and as per the platform is concerned this time we request uh, we receive the request from nrsc that they would like to uh, basically stream this uh, uh, training program to the uh, in the uh, youtube or some social media or also they would like to use the lms what irs is using for training program this learning management system what we have uh, basically given access to you uh, that is a very simple platform and uh, on daily basis generally we have conducted three quiz uh, day 1 2 3 and uh, initially we thought that on daily basis we'll be conducting quiz and end of the day we'll be closing it but now what is happening we are getting request from the different participant that they would like to see the quiz for more duration so as per the your request we have extended the quiz duration till 15th of july so till uh, 15th july you can attend this quiz and uh, although we are not seeing very good response there around uh, 200 people only are uh, there are attending the quiz Uh, but total number is more than uh, that it's around 3000 plus participants have registered for the program and uh, as for the social media is concerned in the youtube we have seen that it's a good response is there uh, as the, in the day one i have seen around 2000 participants were there uh, overall for the day and second day also the similar response was there and third day we had still we have to see it so number doesn't matter for us our team is very sincerely putting their effort to uh, enhance the knowledge of this bhuvan and other uh, technology what uh, through team is developing so please be active and join these programs and there are lot of contents are available for learning purpose and be in touch with the team and they are very regularly they are conducting detailed training programs so please uh, participate there and if you have any query regarding the platforms or any issues you please write to us we will try to resolve these things with this i thank to nrc team and also team from my side mr ashok and mr janardhan janardhan is very sick actually i think uh, he is having very uh, high fever but still he is operating from home whatever support is required thank you for that and uh, we'll be very happy to uh, basically join to hand together for future programs wherever you feel that our support is required we are always available thank you very much Yeah, thank you very much, sir. And uh, we also definitely look forward. To, uh, I mean, seeking your support uh, for our future programs also. So th thank you very much, uh, sir. Before we uh, proceed ahead uh, with our uh, valedictory address, I'll take some of the uh, feedback that are that is posted in the, uh, the live chat of YouTube. Uh, Mr. Arsh Goel has expressed that uh, this is a very informative session and a complete workshop and is very good. And he is requesting like uh, to arrange such workshops in future and uh, looking forward for the future. Uh, 
uh, internship or the workshops. Uh, then uh, Mr. Krishnendu Goswami has expressed his, uh, uh, I mean, uh, thanks to, to this webinar. Uh, uh, he said he loved the webinar overall. Uh, prior to this webinar, uh, he wasn't much aware about the Bhuvan and its capabilities and also the vast data it is hosting. So he says like he's feeling very privileged to be a part of this uh, program. And then Mr. Uh, uh, again, Mr. Krishnendu Goswami has expressed like uh, if we can get an app which will work like Google Maps with Bhuvan data that shows us location, commuting, speed of uh, traveling, uh, this will make it even more interesting. Uh, then again, Mr. Arsh Goel has uh, expressed, uh, can we do any internet internship or anything? Uh, okay, that is not related to this one uh, portal. Uh, and again, uh, one more uh, feedback saying that uh, can we make another platform in the uh, LMS portal exclusively for the videos and uh, basic instructions? Uh, so this is what uh, our, one of the uh, participants has expressed. Yeah, I mean, uh, these are some of the feedback I can uh, currently see, sir. And like uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Manas Patel uh, is saying that. Uh, yeah, I mean, so one of the feature like uh, the drag and drop feature where uh, the particular uh, information can be displayed directly on the uh, uh, web page itself. So yes, sir, uh, we'll take that uh, particular uh, feedback. Yeah, and again, uh, I mean, uh, whatever the messages that were posted said that they were very happy with this uh, course and uh, they were uh, happy to be a part of this webinar. And uh, they have expressed their thanks. So these are some of the messages uh, that I'm, uh, I can pick through the live chat, sir. I think they will get the actual feedback, the formal feedback uh, from the LMS platform. Uh, so that uh, we get to know once the uh, once we conclude this course. So thank you, dear participants, for your uh, uh, sincere feedback. And uh, I now. Uh, uh, welcome, uh, Dr. S. S. Rao, uh, to this uh, uh, to this closeout session. <coughs> and sir, uh, welcome, sir. Uh, sir, uh, over to you for your uh, uh, valedictory address. Good afternoon to all the participants, and uh, in particular, Dr. Harish Karnata, uh, Mr. Arul Das, and uh, all my colleagues from NRSC who have contributed in uh, providing this training program. As you're aware, Bhuvan is, I can say, one of the rich portals in the uh, geospatial portal in the world because it contains a lot, lot of satellite data as well as the thematic resources. So the, some of the projects which are SDP or India Warriors or NR census program all put together, approximately 1,000 crores uh, worth of projects data is available in Bhuvan. And what I'm talking about only the thematic resources and other things. In addition to this, we have the more than one, uh, I think 100 million PY data and the latest satellite data starting from 50 meters to 50 centimeters is available. And uh, so day by day, we are increasing the content, uh, particularly the climate data, disaster related data. And the satellite data also we are providing the almost near real time satellite data is being provided. And at the same time, we are also start, started the, doing the, some valuation to this rich database. Some of the some algorithms we are using the AML techniques, so new technologies, artificial and some neural network machine learning. And uh, very soon the portal will be enriched with these uh, tools also, so that uh, using those tools we can do some. Uh, quickly you can generate the, some products using the AML algorithms that are being developed. Uh, and a uh, lot of improvement has happened in the Bhuvan portal also, particularly our rendering speed has increased. Some visualization look and feel have been improved by our Arunas group. And uh, so a number of applications are day by day increasing. Almost I can say per month one application is coming. So very soon we are going to touch 200 mark. Now it's almost up to 197, 197, 198 applications. Very soon, I think this August 12th, which is going to come, this is the 13th birthday, we can say, of Bhuvan portal. And by the time we can have approximately 200 applications, which Bhuvan is supporting. At the same time, looking at the requirements of the various users, a lot of free downloads have been 
put into the uh, board portal. And uh, what we expect the users, the trainees is uh, explore the board portal to the data, satellite data, thematic content, some algorithms, and climate and disaster data. Come up with some proposals so that we can help you in getting the, the data, doing, analyzing the these data sets and generating some valuation products or some uh, developmental plans by various sectors. So most of the government departments have won this portal and uh, new new applications are coming here. Data is more secure, authentic, and number of tools are coming up. So in that way, I think for all uh, natural resources management associated that uh, and all other various factors, climate and disaster related, bone portal is going to become the backbone and the, one of the main portal across India to be used by various users. So I, I once again, uh, congrats, I think for some of the suggestions that you have given, maybe a bone maps similar to Google Maps. I think these are all in the anvil. Very soon they are going to come up. And we are also thinking of some of the uh, algorithms development, particularly uh, similar to the to Google Earth Engine, Bhuvan Earth Engine, or Bhuvan Maps. So like this, very soon uh, we are going to expand the Bhuvan portal, uh, meeting the global requirements or the, the understanding of the various users by utilizing various other portals. So that's very soon is going to come. We request a, a good uh, feedback from all the participants. So looking into their requirements, so, so we are going to continuously improve our portal to meet your requirements. Once again, congratulating all the participants for the participation and provide, thanking them for providing a good feedback. Bhuvan is here to support all sectors of the people in this country. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, sir, for your uh... Uh, valuable uh, address and uh, like uh, whatever uh, uh, we are uh, in the pipeline so hopefully we'll uh, reach out to all the users so thank you very much uh, for that one uh, so with this uh, uh, dear participants and uh, uh, dear colleagues uh, we'll uh, come to the end of this uh, three-day uh, webinar on one overview uh, but before I conclude, uh, let me uh, put on record my sincere thanks to all the people who have uh, uh, supported in organizing this uh, webinar, uh, starting with uh, the dear participants. I think uh, you were the real uh, strength of this webinar, the number of uh, the enthusiasm and the number of registration it has uh, generated. So actually, that was a real trigger point where we had to look for a medium or a platform that could support support all the interested users. So there is a reason we, we, we have explored uh, and in this regard we are very thankful that uh, uh, of our uh, director NRSC uh, and in turn uh, the uh, Dr. Harish Karnatak from IRS who could quickly uh, uh, think of a platform that can uh, meet uh, the requirements of the users. Uh, so that is the uh, basis for our coming into this particular uh, platform and uh, reaching out to you all through this uh, uh, YouTube uh, channel of uh, the EduSat platform of IRS. So thank you very much, dear DS participants. Uh, let me place my sincere thanks uh, on record to Director NRSC also and all the NCMC members. Uh, I also thank uh, uh, DD uh, Bhuvan uh, for his uh, valuable support and guidance. Uh, Arul Raj is here. He's also uh, part of the uh, this uh, Bhuvan uh, team in organizing this uh, this one. Uh, Dr. S S Rao sir, uh, he's also a I mean a key player in this uh, Bhuvan Geo platform. So thank you very much, sir. And uh, uh, Dr. Harish Karnatak, sir, uh, I think uh, uh, this is just the beginning uh, for, uh, uh, I mean, us to explore more on whatever uh, uh, resources you have so that uh, we can uh, reach out to more people uh, to, uh, in order to, I mean, uh, 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 in order for our courses to reach uh, the maximum uh, users. So thank you very much uh, to all the uh, members. And uh, we definitely look forward to, for uh, more such sessions in the future. And uh, and I request all the user participants to kindly provide their uh, uh, feedback, uh, so that uh, as discussed in this in this forum, that uh, we we definitely would like to uh, improve our services and also bring new applications into the fold of Go and Geo Portal. Uh, so with this. Uh, uh, I conclude or we conclude this particular three day webinar program. It has been a very uh, exciting journey. And of course, there have been interruptions in between uh, that uh, we have acknowledged already. 
uh, but we also ensure to see that we uh, we will improve our services uh, in the future webinar courses uh, so with that uh, uh, i take leave from all of you and also thank all the uh, members uh, who have joined for the close out session dr rs rao sir dr harish karnatak sir uh, dr arul raj and all uh, the team located at uh, shad nagar nrsc shad nagar balanagar and also at irs i thank you very much for all the support that has been extended and definitely we look forward to that one uh, so dear participants uh, that's it from our side uh, uh, stay safe uh, stay healthy uh, take care of yourself and uh, do uh, uh, explore bhuvan and kindly uh, uh, give us feedback about uh, how do you feel what are the uh, features you need what what more you want so kindly write to us and uh, Uh, be in touch with us we'll definitely are here to support all of your uh, 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 queries so thank you very much uh, sir i take leave uh, uh, with all of you thank you thank you aris thank you arun thank you sir rao sir